ito. The Committee on Constitutional Commission and Officers is called to order. The agenda is the deliberation on the following ad interim appointments. Number one, Mr. George Irwin M. Garcia as Chairman, Commission on Election for a term expiring on February, 20, February 2, 2029, Vice Saidamen Pangarungan. And then number two, Mr. Carlo Alexi Bendigo Gunograles as Chairman of the Civil Service Commission for a term expiring on February 2, 2029, Vice Alicia De La Rosa Bas Bas Bala. Uh, uh, we ask the Secretary to call the roll. The Honorable Officers and Members of the Committee on Constitutional Commissions and Offices, Vice Chairperson Senator Francis Chis G. Scodero, Representative Jose Gay G. Padiernos, Members Senator Maria Lourdes Nancy S. Binay, Representative Virginel G. Biron, Senator Joseph Victor G. Ejercito, Senator Jingoy Ejercito Estrada, Representative Albert S. Garcia on official travel abroad, Representative Greg G. Gasataya. Senator Christopher Bongo. Present. Senator Rison Tiberos. Senator Lauren Legarda. Representative Oscar Oka G. Malapitan. Senator Amy R. Marcos. Senator Grace Poe. Representative Lani Mercado Revilla. Representative Jordine Jesus M. Romualdo. Representative Manuel T. Sagabarria, Senator Francis Tol N. Tolentino, ex officio members, Representative Ramon N. Guico, Jr., Vice Chairperson, Representative Luis Raymond L. Ray F. Villaferte, Jr., Representative Rodante D. Marcoleta, Minority Floor Leader, Senator Alan Peter Copanero S. Cayetano, Representative Johnny T. Pimentel. Be, yes, sir. There are uh, 15 members present, uh, 14 members in person, and uh, one present online. The chair declares the existence of a quorum. Yeah. <laughs> Sorry. Okay. Madam uh, Chair. Okay. Madam Chair, before we proceed, uh, may I ask an executive, executive session? Because we will have to tackle first our rules. Okay. Uh, is there a second the motion? A second the motion. Uh, it has been moved and seconded that we go on executive session. Thank you. Uh, may we
the two ad interim appointment that was submitted to the committee's jurisdiction. The committee will delib deliberate each appointee in the order that the appointees have submitted the complete documentary requirement pursuant to Article 2, Section 3 of the Rules of the Standing Committee. Kindly stand up as your name is called, Mr. George Irwin M. Garcia, as chairperson, uh, Commission on Elections for a term expiring on February 2, 2029, Vice Mr. Asajamen uh, Pangarungan. And of course, uh, Mr. Carlo Alexis Bendigo Nograles as Chairperson, Civil Service Commission for a term expiring on February 2, 2029, Vice Alicia de la Rosa uh, Bala. Okay. We will now proceed to deliberate the first appointee under consideration of this committee, the ad interim appointment of Mr. George Irwin M. Garcia as Chairman, Commission on Election for a term expiring on February 2, 2029 by Sadiaman Pangarungan. May we request Chairperson Garcia to come forward and take his designated seat May we now hear Secretary Villarica's report on the status of the jurisdictional requirements in compliance with the new rules of the Commission and the rules of the Standing Committee and other relevant information about the appointee. Thank you, Madam Chairperson, Your Honors. The Commission on Appointments received on August 1, 2022, the ad interim appointment of Mr. George Irwin M. Garcia as Chairman of the Commission on Elections for a term expiring on 2 February 2029 by Saidamen B. Pangarungan and was referred by the Chairperson of the Commission, Juan Miguel Migs F. Zubiri, to the Committee on Constitutional Commissions and Offices for its appropriate action on August 23, 2022, pursuant to Section 16, Chapter 5 of the New Rules of the Commission. Likewise, the said ad interim appointment was broadcast over PTV4 station on August 3, 2022 at 6.53 p.m. and published on August 4, 2022 in two newspapers of general circulation, the Manila Times and Manila Standard, pursuant to Section 2, Article 2 of the Rules of the Standing Committees. Chairperson Garcia has complied with the submission of the mandatory documentary requirements on August 17, 2022, as provided for in Section 24, Chapter 6 of the New Rules of the Commission. On August 30, 2022, your Secretariat received an unsworn opposition dated June 8, 2022, filed by Ms. Leonor Barcelon Whale. On September 6, 2022, your Secretariat received her sworn opposition to the appointment of Mr. Er George Irwin M. Garcia as the Chairman of the Commission on Elections. The appointee has submitted an even date his reply to the opposition filed by Ms. Leonor Barcelon Whale. Copies of the above-mentioned documents were already furnished electronically to the members of this committee. The oppositor has been duly notified of today's meeting. The said oppositor is present for today. That is all, Madam Chairman. Chairperson, your honors. Okay, Madam Secretary, uh, please administer the oath to Chairperson George Irwin M. Garcia. Chairperson Garcia, please rise and raise your right hand. Do you swear to tell the truth, the whole truth, and nothing but the truth in this proceeding? So help you, God. Yes, Your Honor, I do. Madam Chair, the point is now under oath. Chair Garcia, you may now uh, proceed with your introductory statement. Mr. Senate President, Honorable uh, Chairperson of the Commission of Appointments, Constitutional Commission, the Honorable Members of the Constitutional Commission, Commission on Appointments, maganda magandang umaga po sa inyong lahat. During the conduct of the 2022 national and local elections, we were able to have 82, 84.1% of the total registered voters who cast their votes on the election, 55,241,000 all in all out of the 65,700,000 registered voters in the entire country. It was so far the highest in the history of our country. Likewise, during the last election of 2022, we were able to have only 23 election-related violence, the most peaceful election so far in, the, uh, in our history. 
Likewise, the commission election received 83% trust rating from our people. We were able to canvas in less than eight, in less than eight days to proclaim the senators and likewise to proclaim the members of the House of Representatives, the party list congressmen. The, the Senate, as well as the House of Representatives, were able to canvass the results in, a, in, a, in the fastest um, way possible in two days only, and uh, was able to proclaim the winning president and vice president in just a matter of three days. Your honors, this is but a little accomplishment on the part of the commissioner election. I was happy that I was a part of the COMELEC at that time. We gained a lot of experience and a lot of, of course, there were setbacks, but uh, the experience and the learnings that we, we, we acquired from the 2022 election is incomparable, and we will definitely use that under your present leadership for the purpose of ensuring that the 2025 election and the elections after that will be, if not co-equal to the 2022 election, at least we'll be able to surpass the same. What are the institutional reforms that the present leadership would like to accomplish? Number one, we would like to institute reforms as far as election laws are concerned that will govern the conduct of the election in our country. Number two, we would like to ensure greater transparency in all the operations of the Commission on Elections. Ang ibig sabihin po, wala pong aktividad o proseso ng COMELEC ang kinakailangan natatago sa publiko. Greater engagement with our citizenry, with all the st stakeholders of election should be accomplished by the Commission on Election. Hindi po kinakailangan nagtatago kami ng kahit na anong bagay. At the same time, we would like to ensure professionalism in the conduct of our work because we would like to instill to our people, to all our employees and workers, that we are performing a constitutional duty, not just a job, not just a work, but a constitutional duty provided for by no less than the 1987 Constitution. Sa akin pong palagay, ma-accomplish lang po namin kung hindi man mahigitan ang 2022 elections nung ating pong nagawang yon. Masigurado lang po natin that the people are able to vote and that their votes are counted and we are able to proclaim the right winners to us. The duty of the COMELEC is accomplished. And so, if given the chance, your honors, these are the, the, these are the things that uh, your representation would like to accomplish before the COMELEC. In the meantime, I, the, 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 the COMELEC is now likewise ensuring proper accountability in the handling of our finances, in the handling of the budget of, of the people's money. Kinakailangan sigurado rin po na tama yung paggastos namin at kinakailangan din po na mawala ang duda sa amin ng mga kababayan natin patungkol sa paggamit ng kaban ng bayan. Para sa akin pong palagay, napaka-importante lagi ang tiwala ng mga mamamayan sapagkat ang isang demokrasya ay mabubuhay lamang at sisigla kung ang mamamayan mismo ay naniniwala sa kakayanan nito at ng kanyang pamahalaan. Magandang magandang umaga po. Maraming salamat po. Maraming salamat sa iyo, Chairman Garcia. The appointee is now ready to respond to any comment or question from the members. Uh, may we recognize uh, uh, Representative Revilla. Good uh, morning, uh, Mr. Senate President, uh, Madam Chair, and to our uh, Commissioner, Chairman from the COMELEC. Sir, uh, there was a mention about a written opposition filed against you by a certain Mrs. Leonor Whale. Even while this is, a, is, this is not a sworn statement, the same has been distributed for the consumption of all the CA members. And the allegations therein contain serious accusations of acts of moral turpitude. Um, it is but proper to uh, give you, Attorney Garcia, the chance now to briefly air your side of the story. Please, we would like to hear your side. Thank you very much, uh, Madam Chair, Your Honors. Kinikilala ko po na ito'y part ng isang proseso. And therefore, I do not uh, resent and I do not have hard uh, or feelings against the oppositor. Nung pong uh, ako ay uh, for confirmation bilang commission, commissioner ng commission election, naandyan na rin po yung opposition. It's a welcome development, but it's part of a democratic process. However, with all due respect, 
this, I believe, is a pure and simple harassment. For the last 12 years, I had received a lot of cases, not only for the, from the in, uh, integrated bar of the Philippines up to the Supreme Court, to the RTC, to the Court of Appeals, to the DOJ, to the Court of Tax Appeals, to the BIR, name it. I receive all of these cases and I survive all of these cases because all of these cases were dismissed with finality by the courts. I do not want to discuss the merits because I believe that this is not for this body, this is not the proper forum to discuss the same. But if, if under the Constitution, the basis will be merits and fitness and character and morality, your honors, I would like to take pride in saying that despite all the cases that I received from the oppositor, I did not file a single case against her, simply because I am a lawyer. And I, I know for a fact that if you will be filing a case, the other party will be getting a counsel, babayaran po niya, gagastos po niya. Maaari po siya ay biktima ng circumstances, not ng ibang tao, but not necessarily this person. There are several lawyers had told me, my own lawyers had told me to file a case, or at least cases against her. I did not. In fact, your honors, this involves a property. The, the judge even castigated me and told me, why did you not uh, proceed with the titling of that, the property? I said, until and unless there is a is the final and executory decision, that is the only time that I will start the process as required by, by, by the court. So, yan po, your honors, ang masasabi ko po. These were all decided by the courts with finality by the different uh, departments and even by the Supreme Court. So if the oppositor would like to take this opportunity now, this venue, this forum, then it's up to her. But I honestly believe that the members of this commission, a constitutional commission, will exercise the greatest prudence and the wisdom to determine and to separate what is applicable here and what is for the courts to decide. Thank you very much, Your Honors. Madam Chair? Yes. Uh, uh, just for clarification, so the oppositor filed cases against you at the RTC and you've already uh, won that case? That is right, Madam Chair. And uh, she has filed also an appeal at the Court of Appeals. And as you mentioned, uh, you've already won judgment. That is right, Your Honor. And up to the Supreme Court. That is right, Your Honor, as far as the disbarment cases. So the basis of the opposition was actually filed in the courts, and you have won already on all cases and uh, up to the Supreme Court. Modesty aside, Your Honor, that you are correct. Thank you, Your Honor. Thank you very much, Your Honor. Okay. Thank you, Madam Chair. For uh, thank you, Attorney, for uh, clarifying. For uh, of course, for the benefit of uh, us new members of the CA, I know that you have a very good track record in terms of being an election lawyer and being an election lawyer of um, most of uh, the politicians now who are seated. Um, as Comelec Chair, I understand that you are out on a mission, and I uh, you want to set reforms in um, your particular office. I would just like to find out: Would you pursue the long-standing clamor to replace SMT? for the next national and local elections? Uh, definitely, uh, Your Honours, but however, however, I would like to uh, respectfully be clarified that the COMELEC is a collegial body. I do not want to preempt the action of the Commission, but certainly this is one of the reform agenda that your representation, yours truly, would like to pursue and to proceed not only for the 2025 election, but likewise in the elections yet to come. Under the guidance, uh, of course, of our uh, Senate and the House of Representatives and the Executive, more particularly the Joint Congressional Oversight Committee, as well as the Committee on Electoral Reforms and uh, Suffrage headed by the Honorable Senator Amy Marcos in the Senate and the Honorable Congressman Dialog in the House of Representatives. Thank you very much, Madam Chair. That would be all. Thank you very much, Attorney. Thank you. Thank, Thank you, you very much, Madam Chair. Thank you very much, Representative Revilla. Are there any more? Madam Chair. Yes. The duty of this body is basically to make sure the competence and integrity of the person being nominated. Uh, Comelec Chairman Jord mentioned earlier uh, among his plans, and we were happy. No, uh, most of the nominees don't even mention their plans. No, just one quick question of concern of Comelec employees: Is yung problema po dun sa 
building nyo po. You know, I've been there and uh, if there's a fire or an emergency, sad to say, baka marami pong maaksidente doon. What will be your plan as chairman in terms of, you know, fixing that problem of your office? Uh, will you be building? Uh, will you be asking Congress for funds to rebuild that office into a respectable uh, office of the commission? And what is your timetable? Thank you. Thank you very much, Madam Chair, your honors. Maraming maraming salamat po sa napakagandang tanong na yan. Pagpasok na pagpasok po bilang chairman, uh, pangit nga mampung mam sabihin, subalit uh, yan po yung isa sa mga nabigkas ko at paninindigan ko bilang chairman na kinakailang magkaroon po kami ng building. Ang Commission on Human Rights, ang Civil Service Commission, ang Office of the Ombudsman, ang, ang uh, lahat po ng constitutional body, your honors, ay may sariling uh, tahanan. Kami po sa COMELEC ay nangungupahan sa Palacio del Gobernador, tatlong palapag. Doon po sa mga kalapit ng mga gusali, inuupahan din po namin. We are actually leasing for an amount of 159 million a year. In 10 years po, that's 1.5 billion. And at the same time, for the entire country, we are actually paying 179 million, your honors. So isipin nyo na lang po yung kalagayan namin na nangungupahan. At the same time, yung pong aming mga warehouse, meron sa Santa Rosa, meron po dyan sa may Philpos, meron po sa may Maguindano Avenue, meron po sa may Pasig. Samantalang kung isang building lamang po at meron po kaming tat kulang kulang tatlong hektaryang lupain. Diyan po sa Makapagal Avenue in front of the Redemptorist Church. Amin po yon sa pangalan ng Commission Election. Walong palapag po ang aming na-envision na ipagawa na building. That will cost the government at least 8.2 billion pesos. And lucky for us, and we would like to really appreciate the President of the Philippines, uh, President Bongbong Marcos, including, of course, the Secretary of Budget and Management, na binigyan po kami initially ng 500 million. It may be too small. That is right po. Pero alam niyo po, sa mga katulad namin na naninikluhod para magkaroon ng sariling building, napakalaki na po yun. We envisioned it to be constructed in four to five years. And hopefully, pag nagpile po kayong inyong mga candidacies, especially for national positions, hindi na po kami nyo makikita doon sa, sa, sa may sofitel na nagre-renta. O kaya magpo-proclaim po tayo dyan mismo sa PICC dahil nagre-renta rin po kami. At yung aming pong random manual audit, nagre-renta po lahat po, nire-renta po namin because we do not have our own, ho our own home. Alam po natin, tayo mga Pilipino, isa lang po ang ambisyon ng bawat pamilyang Pilipino magkaroon po ng tirahan o tahanan. Kami po na sa Comelec ay hindi po iba. Gusto rin po namin magkaroon ng sarili naming tahanan dahil kailangan, kailangan, kailangan po. Your Honors, for purposes of organizing everything and proper administration, a building housing the entire commission election is but a necessity. Definitely, Your Honors, we will be pleading with Congress to at least provide us with certain funds, even so small an amount, so that we will be able to construct even five years, eight years, ten years, it doesn't really matter. Maghihintay po kami hanggang sa maibigay po sa amin ang aming building. Madam Chair, ano na lang last, no, yung... You mentioned the trust rating of COMELEC has increased because of the last elections. I myself is very happy no? because normally after an election, kahit nakamalaki ang lamang, you, you get proclaimed five days after or longer. This time, two days. no? Uh, I'm sure everybody experienced that. But of course, we should not rest on that success uh, kung pwede ng one day or earlier. no? What is your plan with regards to the current counting machines, di ba? It's over 15 years old. Uh, will, uh, what is your plan? Uh, uh, hindi, dapat bang palitan na yan? Uh, I-refurbish yan? Uh, because, you know, while again, you succeeded partially in uh, shortening the time of the counting and proclamation, uh, we should aspire for a shorter time. Uh, gusto lang namin marinig po sa iyo, Mr. Chairman, uh, Chairman George, kung ano ba ang plano nyo with regards to the counting machines that I think are already dilapidated and for replacement? Thank you very much, uh, Madam Chair, Mr. Uh, Your Honors. Tama po. Yung pong 90,000 uh, vote counting machines natin ay kinakailangan na pong i-retire. Katulad din po ng isang appliance sa bahay, katulad po ng isang refrigerator, kapag po matagal na nating nagagamit at hindi na po lumalamig, kinakailangan na pong pasalamatan at isang tabi na po. Ganyan din po yung mga accounting machines natin. Tatlong elections na po nila tayo na pagsisilbihan. And we honestly based on technical specifications and technical reason. 
if we are going to use these machines in the 2025 elections, yung pong initial, yung pong mga nakikita nyo po na mga machine na, tinat, na pinupukpok, machine na kinakailangan lagyan ng, ng electric fan para lang medyo lumamig, yung machine na kinakailangan pong pahintuin muna, o yung machines na medyo kinakailangan adjust kasi yung balota hindi na po kumakasya, all of these things will again happen in magnitude by 2025. And that's the reason why po we are envisioning to replace all of these machines. Kaya lamang po, your honors, hindi po natin, with all due respect, kailangan bumili. Sapagkat ang mga makina, katulad po ng mga bakabagong teknolohiya, sa katulad ng cellphone, ay nagbabago after six months. Kinakailangan po, ang pinaka-effective pinaka ay mag-lease ng mga machines. Bakit po? Sa paglis po ang machines, hindi po kami magwe-warehouse. Hindi rin po kami magme-maintain. Mas mura po kasi ang paglis ng machines at sisiguraduhin lagi na nagpapaupa na bago yung mga makina na ibibigay at pagagamit po sa amin. But of course po, we will still be waiting your honors sa ating buong uh, kongreso kung ano po ang gusto niyo pong uh, klase ng makina, kung ano po ang specification na gusto nyo po para sa mga makina, at yung hihintayin po namin ang guidance po ng ating kongreso. Nung pong nakaraang uh, eleksyon, ay meron pong naipanukala na tinatawag po nating hybrid election. Hihintayin po namin kung yan po muli ay maipapanukala o kung hindi po ay mauulit yung 2022 election. We cannot go back anymore sa manu-mano or manual election. Our barangay election will be manu-mano or manual. Pero for the next elections 25 onwards it will always be computerized election your honors it's not only about the speed in which we are able to get the results it should be based on the credibility of the results we will not stop doon po sa mabilis lang na result dapat po credible yung result na nakukuha po natin thank you very much your honors representative marcoleta Salamat po, Madam Chair. One manifestation and one question. Let me start with the manifestation. Uh, th there was an opposition uh, uh, filed uh, before us, Madam Chair, as related by Representative Lani. I, I read all the cases uh, filed uh, in that opposition, Madam Chair, and I noticed that all the cases originated from one single transaction. Uh, and and I and I noticed that in the RTC, uh, Commissioner or Chairman George uh, won by way of a summary judgment. What is the significance of that? Uh, a summary judgment is like a judgment on the pleadings. It did not even take the court uh, a full a full blown trial. At the very start, the the court already noticed that the complaint. Uh, did not tender any genuine issue on any material fact. And that's very important to us, just to disabuse the minds of uh, the members of this committee. Nagpunta po sila sa Court of Tax Appeals, meron pa po sa DOJ, and then uh, the agreed party did not rest. She appealed to uh, the, the, the Court of Appeals. Pero na-dismiss po lahat. Even the disbarment case, the Supreme Court even upheld the denial or dismissal of the case. So I don't think uh, the complaint should be lodged before us because this committee will not be in a position to render a contrary determination. Hindi naman natin siguro pwedeng hindi pansinin po yung mga dismissal sa napakarami pong pagyayari. And I think... Uh, Chairman George already uh, won all these cases. In all the uh, investigating uh, agencies, all tribunals, and the courts, Madam Chair. So may, may I now go to my question. Commissioner George, uh, former Commissioner Guanzon, filed a petition before the COMELEC I think that was in connection with the substitution or how her substitution to a previous nominee uh, to a party list group. Am I correct? You are correct, uh, Madam Chair, Your Honor. What was the result of the voting in regard to that petition? If I'm not mistaken, Your Honor, uh, because I had I did I was not a part a participant to that uh, voting because I was no longer a commissioner. 
I think uh, the, the voting was unanimous, 4-0, Your Honor, at that time. 4-0. In favor? There were only four uh, commissioners at the time, Commissioner George. Yes, Your Honor. Um, and Rino, the voting, I think, is 3-1. I, I was not aware, Your Honor, uh, with all due respect, simply because I'm no longer a part of the commission at that time. Yes, I know, but uh, I, I, saw the, uh, I saw the copy of the decision and the commission and bank voted 3-1. What is the significance of the 3 1 vote, uh, Commissioner George? In the case of Australia versus the Commission election, and as asserted by the Supreme Court in the case of Sevilla versus the Commission election, the Supreme Court said that there must always be four votes in the Commission election. And therefore, failure to attain four votes would mean that either the petition or the, the motion for reconsideration is deemed denied, Your Honor. So the, the decision has no effect. That is what you're saying. As far as that this uh, jurisprudence uh, are concerned, Your Honor. And yes. so because the decision uh, has no efficacy, so to speak, the, the COMELEC, I believe, did not issue a certificate of proclamation to uh, former Commissioner Guanzon. That, that, that should really be the case, uh, Your Honors, Madam Chair. Because if there is no majority reach by the commission and bank, four votes were not uh, acquired, Your Honor, in that case, then no proclamation should be issued to anyone. Do you know if there is a certificate of uh, proclamation ever issued by the Comile in favor of uh, former Commissioner Guanzo? To be very candid and honest, I was, I, I'm not really aware, Your Honor. Thank you, Madam Chair. Uh, thank you. Uh... Representative Marcoleta, we wish to acknowledge the presence of Senator Lauren Legarda. Okay. Any more question? Yes. Uh, 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 Senator Risa Ontiveros. Salamat, Madam Chair, at magandang umaga po, uh, Chair Garcia. Um, kanina po sa opening remarks nyo, binanggit nyo rin po yung accountability ng COMELEC sa budget na ginagamit nito. So, uh, during the national budget proceedings, hinandle ko po yung allocation ng COMELEC nitong nakaraang tatlong taon. At alam ko po na mula 2020 hanggang kasalukuyang 2022, may total po na 1.3 billion pesos ang inallocate para sa uh, development ng COMELEC uh, information technology and software systems. So pwede po bang mag-provide ang chair ng update sa honorable committee na ito as to ano na yung na accomplish sa malaking budget na ito so far. Maraming maraming salamat po, Madam Chair, Your Honor. Uh, as far as the improvement of our system and programs are, are concerned, Your Honor, mas malaking budget po, Your Honor, ang uh, nailaan para sa automated election system of 2022. We were able to spend 2.9 billion pesos, not only for the for the rent of the machines, but likewise the other collateral such as mga laptops, such as po yung mga servers, and such other collaterals. Meron din po kami, Your Honor, uh, na IPPS at the same time yung pong mithi na tinatawag na uh, yan po ay prescribed po ng DBM. Likewise, Your Honor, if you can still remember, meron po kaming voters, voters verification and registration system as well as po yung aming precinct finder na inaamin po naman namin na kahit paano ay may mga ilang kapalpakan din. Pero just the same po, 35,000 po na hits or 35,000 na attempts to intrude into that system hindi po nagawa because we improved greatly. Nung 2019, Your Honors, if you can still remember, ay uh, yung aming pong sistema ay nahak pati po yung mismong precinct finder but but in 2022 35,000 attempts were made to hack the system they failed uh, already because of our improved system likewise uh, your honor meron din po kami tinatawag na AFIS automated fingerprint and identification system kung napapansin niyo po your honors sa inyo pong mga respective district and the entire country kaya po namin ma-determine kung sino ang mga double registrants at mga multiple registrants. Kung kaya po, kung halimbawa sa isa pong municipality ng Kamigin, pagkatapos po ay biglang pumunta sa kabilang municipality na hindi po nagtatanggal ng kanyang registration sa pinanggalingan niya municipality, we can easily trace uh, these individuals because of that 
uh, AFIS na tinatawag namin, Automated Fingerprint Identification System. We, uh, we are instructing our board, our, uh, our, the, the election officers to cause the removal of these names and to charge persons who will be found to be guilty of double registration. And finally, your honors, internally po, internally we protected all our systems because nga po, the Comerec is always prone to hacking by everyone. They are so proud that they can hack into the system of the Commission on the Election. Under our watch, your honors, we will never allow these things to happen. Thank you very much, your honor. Rami salamat, uh, Chair. Speaking up uh, of uh, voters' registration at uh, yung double or multiple registrants, um, context muna po. Uh, kunyari may voter A, botante po sa Maynila, pero pwede rin siyang mag-register uh, bilang botante sa Quezon City, uh, sa Navotas, sa Malabon, and so on and so forth. Dahil yung Comelec field offices, yung field offices po natin, ay hindi pa infrastructurally equipped para i-determine real time na si voter A, botante na pala ng siyudad ng Maynila. At almost always, yung Comelec main office ay uh, nakaka-determine lang na si voter A ay multiple uh, registrant na pala ng iba't ibang siyudad pagka lamang dumaan na dun sa AFIS na binanggit din ni Chair. At uh, siguradong pagkatapos, nakaboto na pala siya sa mga sunod-sunod na eleksyon. So yung problema po sa voters list natin ay uh, tulad ng dati, nananatili po siyang bloated. Uh, ano po, at yung effort na sa totoo lang linisin siya ay hindi pa naging prioridad. So, kung ito pong double or multiple registrants ay nadidetect po ng commission ng maaga at nadilist o natanggal ng maaga, then ano din po, uh, kanina pinag-uusapan po natin yung budget ng COMELEC, mas makakatipid po ng resources ang COMELEC din sa pag-print ng mga voters' information sheets at yung aktual na official ballots natin. So, paano po ng COMELEC, ito po yung susunod na tanong ko, Chair, paano po ninyo makakurb itong perennial problem natin kaugnay ng voters' list o ng book of voters kung kayo po yung uh, taga-pangulo, yung chair. So, anong infrastructure at particular anong digital infrastructure ang tingin ninyo dapat gamitin para ma-detect real-time yung mga posibleng double o multiple registrants? Maraming maraming salamat, uh, Madam Chair, uh, Your Honor. Uh, alam niyo po, kahit po hindi improve yung digital infrastructure ng COMELEC, nasa proper administration lang po, and we have to really look into Republic Act 8189. The solution really is, before po, halimbawa po, si A nag-register as a voter sa municipality or precinct na ito. Before po aksyonan yung kanyang registration ng ating board, kung tama siyang maparehistro, mailipat ang registration, we, the, 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 the board will, or the election officer will always verify with the main office, automatically, meron po kaming 5,000 or 200 alimbawa na nagpaparehistro. Ibe-verify po kaagad namin before they can even act. Meaning to say, Your Honors, if this particular voter is, was found out to be uh, a registered voter of another precinct, we will not, we, we, they will disallow that such re registration. So yung board po may power naman po siya na iset aside yung registration kahit wala pong formal na opposition so long as meron pong uh, uh, due process observed, basta po na-inform. Number two po, uh, Your Honor, ang isa pong nakita kong problema, alam niyo po ba kung anong kadahilan ng Your Honors, kung bakit ang mga patay ay naanjan pa rin sa listahan, na matay na ng dalawang taon, hindi pa rin po natatanggal. Samantalang, so ang bintang po ng mga kababayan natin, pinapaboto talaga ang mga patay. Pero ang katotohanan po ay ganito, Sa ating pong bata sa registration, tinatawag po natin continuing registration law, yung Republic Act 8189, ang civil registrar ng bawat bayan nyo po ay required po na mag-submit quarterly na mga namatay sa bayan na yon. Wala naman pong problema doon. Ang problema po, Your, Honor, eh, Your Honors, ay kapag po namatay sa bayan outside ng kung siya nakatira o nakarehistro. Halimbawa po, siya po ay from Camarines Sur, E bigla po siyang namatay halimbawa dito po sa Maynila. Yung pong civil registrar ng Maynila ay hindi po mag issue ng certification sa election officer ng Camarines Sur upang patanggal yung pangalan po. 
So doon po may problema po kami. So ibig sabihin po yung mga namamatay outside of the places where they are a resident or they are registered voters, hindi po natatanggal. So ano po ang solusyon namin? Ang solusyon po namin is dapat makipag-coordinate sa ating pong sa, sa nasa statistics or sa national uh, sa civil registrar general. May problema po lang po kami. For your information po, pinababayaran po kasi sa amin bawat isang namatay nakukuha ni naming information. Ang solution po dyan is legislation. We have to push for legislation that the civil registrar will be compelled in the national office to give to COMELEC all the names of namatay sa isang quarter, sa isang buong taon, kami na po ang magdi-distribute sa mga election officers namin, dapat po for free. Kasi po kung limang piso bawat isang botante ang hihingin sa amin at may namatay po halimbawa pong kalhating milyon sa isang taon, ganun po yung babayaran namin yung owners at wala po kaming pondo para po doon. We would like to enter with sa kanila po sa isang MOA. Kaya lamang po, Tali din po yung kamay nila kasi po certification po yun. And therefore, may bayad po, kaya po alam namin. And so, kinakailangan po magkaroon lang ng konting pagbabago yung honors sa ating umiiral na batas. Yung infrastructure po, kaya na po naming matrace your honors. Kung namatay, kung lumipat, o at the same time, kung uh, bagong registrant, or dati na, or double or multiple registrants po. Salamat po, Chair. Actually, um, naunahan nyo sana yung follow-up question ko na hindi ba pwedeng may... Uh, bilateral na lang na arrangement sa pagitan ninyo at ng Civil Registrar General. Mga kailangan pa pala ng legislation. Pero sige po, kung yan ang kinakailangan, well noted naman po yung ganong legislative agenda uh, kaugnay ng RA 8189. Uh, moving on po sa mga tanong ko sa mga paghahanda sa barangay election. Ah, hindi pa. Um, Tanong muna dun sa paghahanda sa barangay elections. Uh, meron pong mga statements attributed sa inyo, Chair, tungkol sa dagdag gastos di umano ng gobyerno na maiinker kung iyong barangay at SK elections na scheduled muli ngayong taon ay ipagpapaliban muli sa susunod na taon. Pero parang kontra po yun dun sa uh, previous pronouncements ng ilang mga leader namin dito sa Kongreso na ang uh, sinusulong sana ipagpaliban itong mga eleksyong ito. Uh, di umano para makatipid tayo ng mga walung bilyong piso at ma-realign ito para sa ating uh, COVID response. Um, so, tanong po, pwede po bang ang chair mag-provide ng update sa komiteng ito tungkol sa current state ng mga paghahanda ng COMELEC para sa December local elections at Mag-provide din po ng opinion ninyo, Chair, kung dapat ba o hindi ba dapat itong uh, electoral exercise ay ipagpaliban. Particular po with reference dun sa yung mga naunang statements ng Chair na yung postponement na ito ay magiging mas magastos para sa gobyerno. Maraming salamat po, Madam Chair, Your Honors. Uh, una po, ang COMELEC po ay... ay uh... Sobrang nagahanda na po sa kasalukuyan. Sabi ko nga po mo, or less 80% na po kami natatapos sa aming paghahanda. Magpa-file na po tayo ng candidacy para sa October 6 to 13 para po sa ating mga SK at barangay candidates. At therefore po magsisimula na rin po ang election period pati ganban mula po sa October 6 onwards hanggang January 12. Um, in a matter of less than... Two weeks, kami po'y magpiprint na ng balota. We would like to respectfully inform the honorable members of this August body that we will be able to complete printing the entire 92 million ballots for the barangay and SK election in a, in a matter of one month po. Kaya po namin ma-print one, one month. 92 million po yun sapagkat ang kasalukuyan po nating botante, your honors, para sa regular election ay 67 million at para po sa barangay, sa mga kabataan po natin ay 25 million po naman. So, ang, pag, ang, ang kulang na lang po namin ay yung print ng mga balota, yung pong mga gamit na kailangan namin katulad ng indelible ink, ballot boxes, katulad po ng mga uh, uh, ball pen, lahat po yan na procure na namin and therefore yung pondo po namin ay naka-allocate na po sa bawat uh, pagbili namin yon Naghihintay na lang po kami na i-deliver yun o ma ma at uh, aprubahan ng NBank yung mga pagbili po nito. Huwag po magalala mga kababayan natin, ano man po ang mangyayari sa eleksyon, matutuloy sa December 5, 2022, lahat po ng na binili namin ay gagamitin din po kung sakaling ma-reset sa 2023 elections. Wala pong masasayang. Your honors, kahit po yung balota na ipiprint namin, 
Ginawa na po natin noong 2017, nung nireset po natin ang eleksyon, ginawa po natin 2018. Yung pong lahat ng balota na naprint ng 2017 ay ginamit din natin noong 2018. Ibig sabihin po, yung mapiprint namin na balota na 92 million ay gagamitin din po sa susunod na eleksyon kung sakali pong hindi matutuloy. Sadya po, ako po'y humingi na paumanhin sa ating uh, Committee on Electoral Reforms and Suffrage sa House of Representatives. Ganon din po sa ating Senado nung uh, tayo po'y nag-appear at sinabi po natin na sadya pong hindi makakatipid. Sapagkat yung budget po na meron kami sa kasalukuyan, 8.449 billion pesos, yan po ay exact yung budget lamang para sa December 5, 2022. Nagsumiti po kami ng aming computation sa ating pong Senate Electoral Reforms Committee ng Senate and the House of Representatives. Sinasabi po namin na dahil po pag hindi na tuloy ang eleksyon ng December 5, 2022, kinakailangan po kung yan po ay Mayo gagawin ng, na, ng susunod na taon, kinakailangan magbukas muli kami ng tinatawag po natin na continuing registration na magsisimula ng October hanggang November kung po ito ay gagawin ng Mayo. Samantalang kung if we are going to to postpone and reset the election by December of 2023. Ito naman po ay magsisimula kami ng October muli, itong taon na to, ng registration of voters hanggang June ng susunod na taon. Ang amin pong, uh, ang amin pong projection, base rin po sa Philippine Statistics Authority, meron po kami hindi narehistro na mahigit tatlong milyong botante. Na ang ina-expect po namin ay yan na magre-rehistro hanggang May, hanggang uh, sa dalawang buwan ng registration na yan. Samantala po, kung mag-extend naman po hanggang December, baka po ang magrehistro ay mga lima hanggang anim na milyon na mga botante. At dahil po dyan, ay naipaliwanag po natin na kakailanganin po namin ng dagdag ng mga ballot boxes, dagdag na ballpen, dagdag na indelible ink, dagdag na presinto, dagdag na electoral board members at iba pang mga manggagawa ng bawat presinto. At syempre po, ipaglalaban po ng komisyon na madagdagan din po ang honoraria ng mga guru dahil ito po ay, ay manual election. O, tama po, tama po kayo. Madami po magsasabi, manual naman yan eh, binibilang, apat na daan lang ang botante bawat presinto. Pero alam nyo po, hindi lang naman po yung pagpapa pagpapaboto mula umaga hanggang hapon. Hindi lang naman po yung pagbilang ng mga balotan manually na may mga watchers sa likod. Kung hindi po yung pagdideliver ng mga, mga parapernalya pagkatapos noon, alam niyo po ba ang paghihirap ng mga teachers ay kapag pagkatapos dahil pumipila sila na nakapakahaba para i-deliver ang boxes, election parapernalya na ginamit nila. So, sa Japo, uh, your honors, ay magpapadagdag po kami ng budget kung sakaling tayo marireset sa Mayo o kaya po sa Disyembre na susunod na taon. Salamat po, Chair. Um, so medyo nagbago na yung original position na sinabi ninyo bagamat may babala pa rin at may hiling sa Kongreso. Pero at least assured po kami, or ako at least, and baka ilan sa mga kasamahan ko dito na hindi masasayang yung uh, perang inallocate so far ng Kongreso at ginastos na ng COMELEC para sa ganitong maraming paghahanda. At syempre naman, kung ipagpapaliban namin muli uh, at uh, magbubukas muli kayo ng continuing registration, mga ngailangan nga ng dagdag na budget. At kami rin naman po, I mean, ang Kongreso rin naman po ang tamang makarinig niyan dahil kami naman din po ang nagpapasa uh, ng uh, budget law taon-taon. Uh, so salamat uh, po para sa ganyang update, um, Chair. So ngayon po, uh, babalikan ko yung sinabi ni Chair nung kanilang opening remarks tungkol sa uh, electoral reforms at saka professionalism sa COMELEC at kaugnay ng COMELEC. Kaugnay po ng... Uh, independence ng COMELEC sa posibleng political influence at the local level. Actually, kaugnay din ng isang sinabi ni na, well, itinanong din ni uh, Rep. Mercado Revilla kanina at sinagot ni Chair tungkol doon sa, uh, sa building, ng, yung pinag-usapan uh, ninyong dalawa, sa building ng COMELEC main office, iugnay ko na rin sa uh, uh, mga opisina o, o structures para sa COMELEC sa local level at tungkol din sa independence ng chair uh, mismo. Kanina po uh, nabanggit ng chair na bukod sa uh, binabayaran yung upa para sa central office, sa buong bansa ay gumagastos kayo ng 179 milyon pesos taon-taon para umupa ng mga opisina. Now, in accordance with Section 55 of the Omnibus Election Code, Uh, ang mga LGU natin ay required na mag-provide ng COMELEC local, uh, sa, sa COMELEC local officers ng office space. Kaya uh, sa paghahanda ng eleksyon, uh, ang COMELEC election officers ay madalas 
uh, inaassistehan din ng mga personal na provided din po ng mga LGUs. So, sitwasyon po talaga ito na baka, baka mag sa unwarranted o undue influence ng mga LGU sa COMELEC election officer sa performance ng kanilang mga tungkulin. At may mga panukala naman, yung isa po mula sa lente, uh, yung kanilang COMELEC Integrity Bill. Uh, ganitong mga panukala para i-insulate ang COMELEC sa mga posibleng uh, undue influence sa local level. At sa ganung paraan, ibinobolster yung kanyang institutional independence sa pamamagitan ng, uh, among other ways, uh, pagpayag sa COMELEC na mag-establish ng sarili ninyong mga field offices at i-staff itong mga opisina ng sarili din ninyong mga uh, empleyado. Pero siyempre magre-require po ito ng uh, expenditure na aabot posible sa bilyong-bilyong piso. So, pwede po ba namin isolicit yung opinion ng chair uh, tungkol sa paano kalang ito na i-enhance ang institutional independence ng COMELEC? Ito po ba'y uh, tipong paano kala na susuportahan ng chair at once makumpirma ng honorable commission na ito na balak nilang i-implement sa kanilang term? Maraming salamat po, Madam Chair. Sadya po, tama po, number one priority po will always be the independence and integrity of the commission election because this is what uh, is guaranteed by our constitution. Subalit, alam ko po, kayo pong mga kagalang-galang na miyembro ng commission na ito, nasaksihan niyo po yung mga opisina namin sa lahat, lalo na po sa mga probinsya, sa mga election officers. Mabuti-buti po kung sa Tagig po yun, o sa Tagaytay o sa Las Piñas o kaya kahit po hanggang sa Kamigin, magaganda yung opisina. Subalit, Alam nyo po, yung mga opisina ng election officers namin, misa nasa ilalim ng hagdan, tumutulo, wala na po mapaglagyan ng mga kagamitan. Diyan po sa Manila, overflowing ang, ang lahat ng documents hanggang sa labas po, wala po talagang espasyo. Wala po kami maiprovide dahil napakamahal, wala naman po kaming kakayanan na mag-provide. But uh, I will commit to all of you that before, hopefully, kung sakali po mapagbibigyan ng end of my term, at least the 17 regional uh, offices namin, mapapagawa namin ang lahat ng mga, build, mga, mga buildings nila para at least integrated man lang po. Yung 81 Provincial Election Supervisors Offices po, mukha pong medyo, uh, medyo napakahirap pong i-accomplish ka agad yun in the matter of uh, 5 years, 7 years. Kasi po napakalaking amount po. And with, with more reason po, Your Honors, yung pong aming mga opisina ng election officers, minsan po nabibigyan ng mga local government units Minsan po nabigyan halimbawa po sa, sa kaluokan, maganda, pinaayos, pero minsan po talaga hindi po kami nabibigyan ng mga ibang opisina. Kaya po nangungupahan yung ibang naming opisina, ibang-ibang local uh, election officers uh, offices namin. Tama po, isa po laging concern your honor po, yung paano magiging independent ng COMELEC ganong binibigyan ng, ng opisina, li, binililibre sa opisina o kaya binibigyan ng staff ng mga casuals para tumutulong. But I can honestly tell you po, na yung mga yung po namang mga casual sa limbawa na tumutulong, hindi po sila nakakahawak ng mga computers. Hindi po sila pinapayagan dahil po ang password ay lagi pong nasa election officer at nasa election assistant. Meaning to say, they are just but limited to some administrative matters like during registration of voters, sila po ang mga pinag-aasikaso ng mga botante natin. Sila po yung nag sa mga botante natin. Pero on substantial matters within the office, they will not be allowed. Ang inuuna po natin sa kasalukuyan ng owners ay yung pong reclassification ng lahat po ng opisina ng COMELEC, mga staff ng, ng opis ng COMELEC. Meron po kami mga staff dyan o posisyon na hindi na po relevant sa kasalukuyan. Bakit ka po magkakaroon ng special investigator kung wala ka namang iniimbestigahan? Eh lahat po ng opisina, napakadaming ganon. So kinakailangan, ang kailangan po namin, yung mga makabagong kaalaman katulad po ng systems analyst. Pero kakailanganin po ng reclassification and reorganization because that will entail creation of the new office or naming the new office but increasing the salary grade. Alam niyo po ba pagpasok sa COMELEC ng isang lawyer, salary grade 18 po. Sigurado pong naunahan na kami ng PAO. Sigurado pong naunahan na kami ng, ng, ng uh, prosecutor's office bago pa man pumunta sa COMELEC. Pagkatapos after na mga dalawang linggo, tatlong linggo, aalis na muli sa amin dahil napakadaming trabaho. Salary grade 18 po ang lawyer sa amin at may biometrics pa. So, yung po yung kinakailangan mga pagbabago in order just to ensure that we'll be able to get and to harness the, 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 the Filipino talents, especially in the field of law and in the field of public administration. But of course, kulang po tayo sa budget, 
kung ano po yung dyan, si siguraduhin na lang po namin, structurally, your honors, na hindi maiimpluensya ng aming mga mga election officers, election assistants. Ang, matag, ang iba po dyan, 30 years, 35 years, and they were able to prove independence, neutrality, and impartiality. Thank you very much po. Marami salamat din po, Chair. Curious lang po ako para na rin sa initial na information sa aming uh, Finance Vice Chair na ngayon magde-depensa sa budget ng COMELEC. Huwag na muna nga natin pag-usapan yung 81 election provincial offices na binanggit nyo. Yung sa 17 regional offices, meron na po ba kayong uh, estimate magkano ang kakailanganin niyan over the next three or even six years para kung sakaling maitayo ng COMELEC? Uh, Madam Chair, Your Honors, ang isa pong regional office na dalawang palapag ay aabutin po ng mga 60 to 66 million pesos. Pero sa kasalukuyan po, Your Honors, kinukuha po namin, hindi po namin ipinanghihingi po sa ating uh, kongreso, ikinukuha po namin sa amin pong uh, savings, yung pong pagpapagawa. Ngayon po sa kasalukuyan, nagpapagawa kami ng tatlong regional offices, especially po sa Iloilo, na nabigyan po kami doon ng uh, use of rock sa paggamit ng lupa po doon sa isang, uh, isang area. So, Kinukuha po namin yon, hindi po namin ipinanghihingi upang mas ma-maintain po yung pong, uh, pinapaliwanag niyo po, Your Honor, na independence of the commission and election. Salamat po, Chair. Um, Nag-quick ano lang ako dito sa calculator. Kung 60 million at the minimum times 17 regional offices, so 1.02 billion pesos. Okay, well noted po. Um, lastly po dun sa... Electoral reforms at professionalism, bago yung huling tanong ko. On the chair's independence, uh, ang chair ang isa sa top election lawyers ng ating bansa, having represented many prominent and influential clients sa buong ano na, uh, width at breadth ng Philippine political spectrum sa kanilang maraming taon ng practice. At considering yung long practice ng chair sa election law, uh, at pati yung sheer number at uh, variety of clients na nirepresenta nila over the years, it's only a matter of time po talaga. Bago may kaso na involving any of these same clients ay necessarily darating po sa doorstep ng COMELEC. So, while the chair has admirably demonstrated his willingness to inhibit himself from the deliberation of any case involving one of his former clients, na foresee po ba ng chair uh, kung magiging problema ito vis-a-vis -vis yung participation nila sa deliberations ng COMELEC and Bank. Maraming salamat po, Madam Chair. Alam niyo po, napakarunong ng mga draft, ng draft ng ating saligang batas because they provided the COMELEC with a collegial body. We are severed in the commission ng elections. At sabi nga po, binanggit ko po mga kaso kanina, at any given time, there must be always four votes. So, ang ibig sabihin po, ang chairman po ang kahuli-hulihan po may pirma. And uh, therefore po, therefore po, Masisigurado muna na nakapirma yung mga ibang kasamahan ko po. Pero sa simula pa lang po sinasabi ko na sa kanila that I will inhibit that I will inhibit in these cases or in this particular case. Pinapanindigan ko po 'yon. Hindi lamang po sa, sa cases that I handled before I was appointed as commissioner but yung mga previous relationships ko po. I can fully siguro naman po mapapaliwanag ko sa kanila yung mga kliyente ko before, yung aking predicament sa kasalukuyan. Ang importante lang naman po we must always be fair and at the same time ipakita lamang po that the institution is fair, not only that the chairman is fair and at the same time is able to discern what is right and what is wrong. Your honors, I will always be guided by what by not by by what is right and by what uh, God had always told us to always do the right thing. Yun lang naman po sa akin. Ngayon po, kung magtatampo yung mga iba kong kliyente before, dahil sa hindi ako nag-participate sa pagboto, uh, ang importante po, it is always the institution's interest that must prevail. Nung tinanggap ko po yung posisyon na to, Your Honor, yung mga sakripisyo naman po, napakasarap naman po yung practice din naman ng isang pribadong practitioner na sa isang kalagayan ko po. Pero isa na lang po inisip ko, Your Honors, para sa bayan na lang po, kung bakit ko tinanggap ang posisyon na to. And so, I can commit to you, because under oath naman po ako, that I will always maintain the impartiality of my office and that the institution will always be independent in all its actions. Kaya ako lang naman po tinanong yan, Chair, kasi nga sa dami nung naging kliyente nila nung nakaraang mga taon, eh sayang naman kung tingin nyo mag-i-inhibit kaya kayo 90% of the time or 80% of the time o hindi naman? Um, 
so far naman po, Your Honor, sa, sa mga dumating na mga kaso, hindi naman po. Wala naman po. At uh, gusto ko lang po ipaliwanag. Yung administrative matter, especially the conduct of the procedure, hearing, etc., I will never inhibit because that is my constitutional duty, Your Honor. But during the time of the deliberation of the cases, if that will involve a former client, that is the time that I will inhibit my, myself. Maigi naman po kung ganung Chair, kasi sayang naman kung ma-deprive ang COMELEC ng karanasan, karunungan na mayroon ang Chair, at least dun sa, uh, dun sa initial stage na binanggit nyo. So to my last question po, um, tungkol sa fake news, kasi yung Chair po has come out strongly against what is popularly or unpopularly known as fake news. At kinikilala nila na maaring young fake news na yan ay magkaroon ng napakalaking epekto sa kondukta, sa resulta ng ating eleksyon. So sa huli po, anong uh, konkretong steps, uh, at least sa loob ng authority na ibinibigay sa COMELEC, anong konkretong steps uh, ang ipinapanukala ng chair na gawin uh, para yung laban kontra sa election-related fake news ay mapalakas? Ito bang initiative ng chair? ay may kasamang measures para kontrahin yung mga disinformation campaigns na ginagawa halimbawa ng uh, posibleng mga foreign governments na gustong manipulahin yung electoral process ng Pilipinas. Your Honor, I think it's high time that Congress should uh, determine whether trolling should be now considered as a crime, as a separate crime by itself. Not only it is it may be punishable by uh, our law on um, on um, cyber cyber crime prevention but trolling is should be considered as a separate crime number 2 the comelec will strengthen our relationship with facebook twitter and such other uh, platform so that they themselves will, they will be the one to regulate uh, as far as uh, as far as fake news is concerned your honor fake news is really a threat to our democracy. I agree po. Marami salamat po, Mr. Chair. Marami salamat, Madam. Thank you very much, Your Honor. Chair, it is not really a, a frank question, but a manifestation of support uh, to my uh, kababayan uh, coming from Indang. Indang used to be part of our congressional district, Indang, Tagaytay, Mendez, Alfonso. So, you're 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 qualified fit for the job, but uh, as promised, I have just one question. Salam buto for the record. Just want to get some of your thoughts. This is a slippery slope uh, area that probably would let you traverse into some social media. You mentioned Facebook, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera, uh, arena, uh, Mr. Commissioner. Uh, I have here copies of my favorite document, documents, favorite uh, favorite documents of all the members of the commission. This is a certificate of candidacy. Minabasa ko lagi ito, maaga pa, pero itong certificate of candidacy, pare-pareho naman ito eh. Uh, inabot nyo na lang. The certificate of candidacy was crafted by the COMELEC, right? That's right, ma ma Madam Chair, Your Honor. That's not yet part of my question. So it came out of a resolution, is that correct? That's also right, Your Honor. And then part of the broad uh, powers of the commission is to revise, recraft this every time there is an election. So this can still be changed. Uh, your, yes, but yeah. it should be in accordance with Section 74 of the Omnibus Election. Code. Yes, correct. So ito po yung question ko. There is a COMELEC resolution 9366. And Section 6 thereof, letter M states, refers to organizations being accredited by the COMELEC that it shall not advocate violence or unlawful means to achieve its goals. Familiar with that, sir? Yes, uh, Your Honor. So what, what, what I am uh, thinking of right now is because of the enumerations in a certificate of candidacy is has it occurred to the commissioner's mind possible changes that would probably incorporate what resolution 9366 has at the moment to synchronize everything and to be to be direct now 
Papayag po ba kayo na ilagay natin din dito? Kasi nakalagay dito sa Certificate of Candidacy, I'm a Filipino citizen, I'm a permanent resident, or an, or, uh, I'm not a permanent resident or an immigrant of a foreign country. I have ex executed a, so a sworn renunciation of foreign citizenship, etc. Et Pababa po ito hanggang sa number 14, I give my consent to the Commission Elections to collect data, etc. Et Magtatanong sana ako tungkol sa Data Privacy Act. Eh. Kasi may consent na dito na pwedeng it itapon nyo yung data namin. Eh, ang pinag-uusapan sa Senado, si Senator Jingoy at lahat na, eh, yun na scam kami. Ang daming mga, siguro, 0.5 question ko ito, bago mabuo yung first question, one question. Payag ba kayo maalis tong provision na ito na ipamigay nyo yung personal data ng mga nagpa-file ng certificate of candidacy? If, uh, Your Honor, if... Uh, to, uh to the belief of the Honorable uh, Senator that uh, that will be violative of the, data the right privacy, to the, yeah. the data privacy and uh, the right to privacy of the individual, then the Commission will seriously consider such a yeah. suggestion. Because right. the Data Privacy Act was enacted uh, just recently, matagal na yung Omnibus Election Code, correct? Uh, that, that's right. The, uh, so you will consider uh, that. Para pa, baka kaya na-scam siguro yung iba, kalat na yung data eh. Pa-file yung mga kapitan, yung mga barangay kagawad. So, you're amenable to that. Yes, Your Honor. Thank you, sir. My, my point five question. This is the last question. Okay. With, with the permission of the, the good uh, chairperson. Kasi ito yung naitanong ko sa privilege speech ko noon. And this is the slippery slope. Can it be possible for the last uh, enumeration, for the last number, can, can, can this be placed? This is just, I'm just toying this idea. For the candidate to declare that I am not, I will not support any organization that advocates violence or unlawful means to achieve its goals and to overthrow the government of the Republic of the Philippines. We will include that, Your Honor. Wala pong problema doon, ano? Because that's what the law provides under Republic Act, even Republic Act 6646 and 9369. And yes, also your resolution 9366. Six, six. Yes. So you're amenable to that? Yes, Your Honor. Again, uh, Mr. Madam Chairperson, I reiterate my support. Uh, lest I be accused of being biased, I reiterate my support to Commissioner George Erwin Garcia, my kababayan from Indang Cavite, to be the next. Uh, he is now on the verge to become the longest serving uh, government official in this room. Uh, your term will last 2029. Ang haba na po nun. Baka gawa na yung superhighway natin papunta na Sugbo. So, Madam Chair, that's my only question. And congratulations to Chairman Garcia. Thank you, Senator Toll. We recognize Senator Allen. Good morning, Madam Chair. Just a manifestation, a biblical principle that uh, tinuturo sa atin lahat at nabanggit ng ating uh, magiging uh, COMELEC Chair yung uh, to follow God. Eh, kung anong ating itatanim, yan din ang ating aanihin. And we all know that uh, COMELEC is a guardian kung ano ang itatanim or sino itatanim na leaders ng ating bansa. This representation is not a stranger to the evils of electoral fraud. Nung tumakbo po akong uh, kunsihal nung 1992, ang disqualification case ko, eh, MTC, RTC, COMELEC, umabot pa sa NBank. Nung tumakbo po akong vice mayor, yung protesta po ay umabot sa Long West. At na-proclaim ako bilang vice mayor after ma-proclaim ako bilang congressman ng 1998. <laughs> Noong 2007, I had the privilege sa awa ng Diyos at ng ating kababayan to be the first person to win a Senate seat, seat despite the fact na may kapangalan. And worse, COMELEC was not a guardian but was a participant because the COMELEC then announced that yung kapangalang ko was disqualified just to announce during election day that wala pa yung five-day period so wag bibilangin pagka ang boto ay kayatano lang 
or Peter Cayetano pag hindi buong pangalan na Alan Cayetano or Alan Peter Cayetano. I bring this up because there are some cases that bothered me in this last election. But I'm not going to ask questions, Madam Chair, because I don't want the Commission to be accused of using our power or influence to influence the Chair one way or the other, because um, some of these cases may be live. And our duty as a legislation is not specific cases, but the law and the justice. So with the permission of the body, uh, and uh, we will, I will also take this up during the budget hearing or the uh, Committee on Electoral Reforms rather than in this body, um, Senator Jingoy, who was the chair of this committee in the past during President Aquino's time, is reminding me that I do not have five days to question the chair because that was a previous chairman that I questioned. No? I hope that the questioning here enriches you know, the um, discussion. Malayo na po inabot natin. Marami pong nagreklamo nung 2019 um, na mabagal. Ngayon naman may nagreklamo, masyadong mabilis. Pero hindi na nila alam at inabot yung eleksyon ng 1980s, 1990s. Ako na personally na nakita ko, pinapalitan yung election return na nandun yung pangalan ko sa harap ko. Wala pang cellphone noon, malalaki pang video. And I can say that uh, Attorney George is one of the people uh, na kilala talaga sa COMELEC at sa practice ng election law sa integridad niya. Why can I say this? Because many members of this commission, si George ay naging abogado ng kalaban nila. And in fact, he did not, he was not an election lawyer for the president who won or for President Marcos in this election. So I think that is a testament that we believe in his integrity. So with that manifestation, uh, Madam Chair, I think my vote is obvious. So thank you very much for that. Mr. Chair, uh, Madam Chair. We recognize Senator Bongo for his manifestation. Madam Chair and uh, esteemed uh, colleagues, uh, pleasant uh, morning to all of you. I would like to extend my utmost uh, support for the confirmation of the uh, ad interim appointment of attorney George Garcia as chairman of uh, the Commission on Elections, Comelec. Our appointee today is one of the finest and most sought after election lawyers uh, of today's uh, generation. He dedicated uh, his life to uh, public service. At an early age, he was elected as member of SK in his hometown, Barangay Banaba, Serka, in Dal Cavite from 1989 to 1992. Chairman uh, George uh, worked as a legal uh, assistant at the Gomez and Association Law Office while taking up his Bachelor of Laws uh, degree at uh, the Lyceum of the Philippines University. In 1999, he was successfully admitted to the roster of attorneys, which was uh, recorded as uh, having the lowest passing percentage in the history of Philippine bars at 16.59%. Uh, a year after after hurdling the bar examination, he was then appointed as chief of staff to former Comelec Commissioner Julio De Samito, where, where he had a significant exposure to the general practice of election-related uh, laws. After his uh, tenure in the Comelec, Chairman Garcia established his own law firm, the GE Garcia Law Office, handling various cases before judicial bodies, other courts, and quasi-judicial uh, agencies. Uh, Chair uh, Garcia's uh, legal uh, journey started to flourish uh, when he obtained a favorable ruling from um, the High Court in favor of his former client, then Mayor the Edward uh, Hagedorn. For Florian. His landmark case and propelled his it, legal it, career to new heights, marking the start of his uh, asset as one of the most highly regarded election lawyers in the country. Indeed, he is, he is a lawyer regarded and respected by many as, and certainly, an abogado de Campanilla. Madam Chair, without a doubt, his expertise and uh, uh, to with the election-related laws are some of the many reasons he is uh, highly considered uh, for this uh, 
post. That is why last Congress, former President Duterte appointed Attorney Garcia as a commissioner of the COMELEC. Then Commissioner Garcia became the face of the COMELEC during the 2022 national elections. I once again uh, congratulate Attorney Garcia and the COMELEC for a generally peaceful and successful uh, elections. Having said this, uh, it is a great honor and privilege that I give my consent to the confirmation of Attorney George Garcia as chairman of the commission. Thank you, Madam Chair. Mabuhay kayo, Chairman Garcia. Okay. Thank you, Senator Bongo. We now recognize Senator Amy Marcos for her manifestation. Yes, thank you very much, Madam Chair. And uh, this is just a quick manifestation as well as a uh, plea for support. As a distinguished election uh, lawyer and as the COMELEC chairman, you are more than aware that the present set of election laws need serious updates. The Omnibus Election Code um, derives from the year 1985. Wala pa nung automation, wala pang uh, political advertising, sa broadcast, at kung ano-ano pa. To uh, the extent that you're willing to commit time and manpower to help us in the Senate to recodify our election laws, may I count on your support? I have filed my own imperfect version, but nevertheless ambitious effort to have a new election code. And I count on the uh, chairman and the commission support. Uh, Madam Chair, yes, Your Honor, we already printed your your voluminous uh, draft of the Omnibus Election Code. We are now studying it, Your Honor. Yes, thank you very much. I hope it doesn't take uh, as long as it has taken for the original Omnibus Election Code. Thank you. Thank you, Senator Aimee. We now call on Senate President Subiri Senator, for Senator his... Ah, Senator Grace. Sabi niya, hindi siya mag Senator Grace, manifestation. Oh. Ah, okay. And then Senator Grace, go. Uh, Senator uh, Estrada, manifestation. Thank you, uh, Madam Chair. I would also like to express my 100% support to the confirmation of uh, this particular nominee, Attorney George Garcia, as chairman of the COMELEC. But I only have one question, uh, Mr. Chair. Bayad na ba kayo sa hotel? Yung pinagkakotangan niyo? Sa Sofitel? Ito sa ng presidential debate? Madam Chair, uh, Your Honor, Hindi po kasi ang COMELEC ang kakontrata po ng uh, Sofitel, ng hotel, kung hindi po yung, yung uh, company. And uh, we, we promise you, uh, Madam Chair, we were going to announce the result of our fact-finding investigation in a matter of days. Uh, tungkol sa kung ano talaga nangyari at kung sino ang may liability sa lahat ng mga pangyayari. Bakit po nasibak yung spokesperson ng COMELEC? Nag uh, early retirement po siya, Madam Chair, Mr. Uh, Your Honor. Not connected with the uh, non-payment of the hotel. Uh, in uh, not not related po, pero uh, we will come up with the findings, Your Honor. Okay. Anytime soon. Okay. Thank you very much, Your Honor. Thank you very much, uh, Senator Estrada. We now recognize Senator Grace Po for her manifestation. Thank you, Madam Chair. Actually, yung mga tatlong katanungan ko sa'yo ay nasagot mo na uh, dahil natanong na unang-una yung barangay SK election, bakit naging mas mahal, nasagot mo ng maayos. Um, tungkol naman don sa loan oppositor, na explica ni Congressman Marcoleta na ang may jurisdiction dyan ay mga korte at na panalo mo na lahat. At ang pangatlo ay yung COMELEC building. Lahat nga tayo ay kailangan ng tahanan, pati naman ng Senado ay ganun din ang aming pakay na magkaroon nga ng isang lugar. Tanong ko lang dun sa COMELEC building, bakit palaging nasusunog yung building na yan? Madam Chair. Alam mo, parang pag merong issue, nasusunog eh. 2004 pagkatapos nun, alam naman natin ang naging uh, mga hamon ng 2004, nasunog yung COMELEC building. Uh, kung kailan lang, nasunog ulit. Ano, ano pa? Ano bang meron doon? Madam Chair, uh, Your Honor, sa Japong pag nakadating kayo sa uh, bawat opisina namin, sa Japong talagang konting uh, uh, spark. spark lang, masusunog na buong, buong building. 
wala po kami talagang space. Sobra po yung aming, uh, konti na lang po yung space namin. Hindi na po makalakad yung mga tao. And so, fire hazard na po talaga yung buong uh, lugar kung saan kami meron ngayon, Madam Chair. So, ano yung cost ng last fire? Uh, ano po, overloaded po yung mga saksak ng mga uh, doon po sa mismong linya ng kuryente. Nako, dapat siguro mapacheck natin yun habang wala pang building. Um, ilan lang talagang may expertise sa election law at kayo ay kasama doon, kaya nga hindi po mapapagkaila na natulungan ninyo ko uh, at yung amin din dito sa Senado na dalawang magkatunggali noon ay uh, pareho mong narepresenta. Marami ka ng mga kasong naipanalo at sa tingin ko nakikita namin kung bakit ganon. Uh, ngayon ay nadidepensahan mong iyong sarili at it's high time that you win your own um, case. Your, 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 I guess your own case uh, before the Commission on um, Appointments and I would also strongly urge our colleagues to give you the, the support. So that's all, uh, Madam Chair. Thank you. Give Thank you much. very much, Senator Grace Poe. We now recognize uh, Congressman Pimentel. Uh, thank you, Madam Chair. Actually, I have no questions to the nominee. This is just a manifestation. And may I be allowed to read the, my manifestation, Madam Chair? The Commission on Elections is the constitutional commission having the role in enforcing all the laws and regulations relative to the conduct of the Philippine elections. It operationalizes Section 1, Article 2 of the Constitution which holds that the Philippines is a democratic and republican state. Sovereignty resides in the people and all government authority emanates from them. At the helm of the Comelec should be a lawyer who is adept and skilled in upholding this lofty principle. Before us is Chairman George Garcia, who is arguably an embodiment of the same. One who is no stranger to government service in dub as veteran election lawyer. Chairman George stewarded the Pleb Manila District 1. He also served as special investigator, executive assistant, and later as chief of staff in the team of Commissioner Julio Di Samito. Early on, he was also elected in the Sangguniang Kabataan elections and served as SK member in Cavite. The legal acumen of Chairman George is also known in the practice as one which has established landmark cases in election law, among which is his advocacy for Mayor Edward Hagedorn in Socrates versus Comelec. As a professor of law, he has enriched the young minds of legal learners and future members of the vocation when he taught law from 1992 to 2022, Madam Chair. He's professor in Lyceum of the Philippines, Pamantasan ng Lungsod ng Maynila, Manila Law College, De La Salle University, and the Philippine Law School. He is also a lecturer in the mandatory continuing legal education and a primary source resource speaker for election laws. He's lauded for his pro bono work as a host for both Huntahang Legal and UNTV poll watch for his efforts to bridge the gap between ordinary Filipinos and the laws by conveying its contents in a clear, simple, and practical terms without deviating from the law's true intent and purposes. Members of this August Commission, it would be a disservice to the Filipino people if we deny or preclude Chairman George from serving the Commission on Elections. Let us pursue the path of service. Let us choose the election lawyer who has served and shall continue to serve the noble mandate imposed by the Constitution. Thank you, Madam Chair. Maraming salamat, Senator uh, Congressman Pimentel. We will now hear the last manifestation from our Senate President, and, uh, Subiri. And Congressman Rebecca. No, no, siya ang tatawag. Ikaw magmumu. Yes. Yeah. Thank you, Madam Chair. After which, after which, I'm sure the chairman of the House panel, our vice chair, will also be recognized. Uh, would you want to be uh, ahead of me, sir? Uh, okay. Okay. Okay.
So we recognize uh, Congressman Marcolete, the chairman of the committee of appoint, uh, chairman of the House contingent of on the CA. No, oh, ikaw, ikaw. Eh, no, Marcolete. Uh, so we recognize uh, Congressman Marcoleta. Nalilito na ako sa kanila. Thank you, Madam Chair. Yes, ma'am. This is in connection with the opposition filed uh, against uh, Chairman uh, George uh, Garcia, Madam Chair. We would like to appeal to the sense of understanding of the oppositor because, as I have said earlier, this representation uh, thoroughly reviewed all the cases filed uh, against uh, the subject of today's confirmation hearing. And it, it really went through the legal processes, uh, several tribunals investigating agencies, uh, found out that there is no case against him. Uh, in the RTC, it was uh, decided on a summary judgment. Then the, even the uh, Bureau of Internal Revenue uh, did its own, uh, uh, or filed its own complaint, but just the same, these, these complaints were dismissed. Uh, with the... With the uh, the Court of Tax Appeals did the same thing, uh, Madam Chair. And uh, these cases became final and executory. And I'd like to say that this particular forum will not be in, uh, will not be the proper forum to render a contrary opinion or decision. Meaning to say, we cannot do anything about the cases that have been finally litigated. And I think uh, we should finally uh, put them to rest. And uh, if the oppositor is present, we appeal to her sense of understanding that she cannot forum shop. This, uh, this body is not the one that will render a contrary determination of the case that, that have been finally decided and determined by the proper courts and tribunals in their respective jurisdictions. Madam Chair, salamat po. Thank you, Representative Marcoleta. We now recognize Congressman Gico, the chairman in CA of the House of Representatives. Thank you, uh, Madam Chair. Uh, the House contingent to the Commission on Appointments expresses its utmost support for the appointment of Attorney George Erwin Garcia as chairman of the Commission on Elections. He has proven before this August body that he has the experience, skills, and integrity demanded by the position. It is our earnest prayer that Attorney Garcia continues to perform excellently as chairman of the Com Commission on Election. Thank you. Thank you, uh, Congressman Guico. Now we uh, hear the manifestation of the Senate President Subiri. To my dear compadre, who I've known for decades already, the position that you will hold as chairman of the COMELEC, knowing fully well that that office is the bedrock of our democracy, in charge and tasked to make sure that the elections are safe and accurate. I know fully well, your honors, my distinguished chairperson, that this man was born for the job. Napakagaling ng sagot. Sa totoo lang, in my seven years in this commission, this is probably the first time I've heard a appointee so knowledgeable and he answers so correctly on these issues. Mahaba lang po yung mga sagot. Mahaba lang. <laughs> Pero, napakagaling ng mga sagot ng ating nominee. He has a plan for his employees. He has a plan of action for the next election. He has a plan to modernize the counting machines. He has a plan for his new home, for the bedrock of our democracy, the Commission on Elections. Wala na po tayong masasabing iba. That's why 
Huwag na natin pong patagalin ito. Madam Chair, I move for the approval on committee level on the nomination of that interim appointment of Chairman George Garcia. Second the motion. Second. Second. Second the motion. Oh. It has been moved and seconded that we approve in the committee the confirmation of uh, Chairman uh, George Garcia. Uh, kung wala nang mga tanong, and congratulations to Chair Garcia. You may now be excused. Thank you. Thank you very much, Your Honors. Nawala. Point five lang naman yung point five. Kaya mix point five lang naman yung point five. Wala akong tanong ano lang. Kaya tama ko lang mahabay sa gut pero. Ah, we will now proceed to deliberate the second appointee under consideration of this committee. The ad interim appointment of Mr. Carlo Alexi Rodrigo Berdigo Nograles as chairperson of the Civil Service Commission for a term expiring on February 2, 2029, Vice Alicia De La Rosa Bala. We, may we now request Chairperson Nograles to come forward and take his designated seat. Okay. And we, may we now request Secretary Villarica report on the status of the jurisdictional requirements in compliance with the new rules of the Commissioner Commission and the rules of the Standing Committee and other relevant information about the appointee. Secretary Villarica. You may now sit down. Thank you, Madam Chairperson, Your Honors. The Commission on Appointments received on July 7, 2022, the ad interim appointment of Mr. Carlo Alexei Bendigo Nograles as Chairman of the Civil Service Commission for a term expiring on 2 February 2029 by Alicia De La Rosa Bala and was referred by the Chairperson of the Commission, Juan Miguel Migs F. Zubiri, to the Committee on Constitutional Commissions and Offices for its appropriate action on August 23, 2022, pursuant to Section 16, Chapter 5 of the new rules of the Commission. Likewise, the said ad interim appointment was published on July 28, 2022 in the Manila Times and on July 21, 2022 in the Manila Standard and broadcast over PTV4 station on even date at 7 p.m. pursuant to Section 2, Article 2 of the Rules of the Standing Committees. Chairperson Nograles has complied with the submission of the mandatory documentary requirements on August 25, 2022 pursuant to Section 24, Chapter 6 of the new Rules of the Commission. The Secretary has received endorsement letters supporting the confirmation of the ad interim appointment of Mr. Carlo Alexei Bendigo Nograles as Chairperson of the Civil Service Commission from 1. The CSC Commissioner Eileen Lourdes Lizada, from CSC Commissioner Ryan Alvin Acosta, and 3. Officials and employees of the Civil Service Commission Central and Regional Offices. Moreover, on September 5, 2022, your Secretariat received the sworn opposition on the ad interim appointment of Mr. Carlo Alexei Bendigo Nograles, dated September 1, 2022, filed by Mr. Herminihildo C. Cruz. The appointee has submitted on September 6, 2022, his reply to the said opposition. Copies of the above-mentioned documents were already furnished electronically to the members of this committee. The oppositor has been duly notified of today's meeting. The said oppositor is present for today. That is all, Madam Chairperson, Your Honors. Madam Secretary, please administer the oath to the Chairperson, Carlo Alexi Nograles. Please rise and raise your right hand. Do you swear to tell the truth, the whole truth, and nothing but the truth in these proceedings? So help you God. I do. Madam Chair, the appointee is now under oath. Thank you very much, Chair Nograles. You may now proceed with your introductory statement. Thank you very much, Madam Chair, Senate President Juan Miguel Migzubiri, Honorable Chair Cynthia Villar, Honorable Vice Chair Ramon Guico Jr., Honorable Members of the Committee, Fellow Workers in Government, mga kababayan, may buntag paingon sa maing udto kaniyang tanan. I appear before you for the second time around. Grateful once again for this opportunity to present myself for your consideration and cognizant of the power vested 
on the Commission on Appointments as enshrined in Article 7 of our Constitution. I therefore humbly present myself and my credentials to this honorable commission with the hope of winning over the support of its majority, preferably all of its members, for confirmation of my appointment. I am Carlo Alexei Bendigo Nograles. Currently, I serve as Ad Interim Chair of the Civil Service Commission, the core values of which I personally believe in and professionally uphold. Love of God, love of country, excellence, and integrity. I was raised by a dutiful father of unparalleled commitment to family and public service, and by a very prayerful mother who was an educator and a guidance counselor. Both of them instilled in me the strength of my faith, which I carry on to this day. This was reinforced by my Jesuit education in the Ateneo from nursery to elementary and from college to law school. My four crucial years of high school were spent as a government scholar at the Philippine Science High School in Diliman, where we were taught to value our education as a gift that we should give back through service to our country and the Filipino people. My educators from these two premier institutions and of course my parents emphasized a relentless pursuit of excellence and a constant practice of unwavering integrity in all things I do. Nag-umpisa ako manilbihan sa gobyerno noong 2001 sa House of Representatives bilang isang Chief Political Affairs Officer. Kasabay nito ang aking pag-aaral ng law hanggang sa ako ay pumasa ng bar exams tong 2003. I practiced my profession as a lawyer for six years while continuing to serve as Chief Political Affairs Officer from 2004 up to 2010. Ang inyong lingkod ay nagbigay ng libreng serbisyong legal para sa mga mahirap at nangangailangan nating mga kababayan. At naisa katuparan ko ito kasabay ng pagpapalakad sa district office ng Nooy Majority Leader at kalaunay naging House Speaker na si Congressman Prospero Boy Nograles. At one point in his career in Congress, my father Boy Nogi also served as head of the contingent of the House on the, to the Commission on Appointments. Noong 2010, ako po ay pinalad na mahalal bilang kinatawan ng unang distrito ng Davao City. At nakasabay ko nga po ang iba sa inyo na manungkulan sa Kongreso sa loob ng tatlong termino. In my second term, I was elected as Chair of the Committee on Labor and Employment. And together with fellow legislators, we championed landmark laws such as the Green Jobs Law, the Job Start Philippines Act, the law strengthening our National Labor Relations Commission, the law institutionalizing public employment services or PESO offices in all provinces, municipalities, cities, and other strategic areas, the law strengthening and expanding the special program for employment of students, and the law protecting our seafarers and other workers from ambulance chasing, among others. During my third term in Congress, I was elected as chair of the House Committee on Appropriations and again worked closely with co-legislators in ensuring funding for free higher education law, the National ID System, free irrigation for small farmers, the modernization of the Philippine National Police and Armed Forces of the Philippines, the Universal Health Care Law, the Cancer Care Support Bill or law, among numerous other laws that needed budgetary support. Noong November 2018, ako po'y nabigyan ng pagkakataong magsilbi sa executive branch naman kung saan naging bahagi po tayo ng gabinete ni Pangulong Rodrigo Roa Duterte. As Cabinet Secretary, I was tasked with crafting the agenda for Cabinet meetings and ensuring the close coordination of all government agencies in carrying out presidential directives. In my role as CABSEC, I also served as Chair of the Cabinet Assistance System, Head of the Cabinet Cluster Secretariat that monitors the resolutions and actions of different clusters of government. And by virtue of an executive order, the President also entrusted me to lead the Interagency Task Force on Zero Hunger which crafted the country's first national food policy, our roadmap to ensure the attainment of zero hunger, consistent with the Philippine Development Plan. When COVID-19 hit our shores, I was also selected by my peers to co-chair the Interagency Task Force for the Management of Emerging Infectious Diseases, or IATF. I would preside over the IATF meetings, steering the body as we formulated national policies and action plans to lead government efforts in addressing the pandemic. For a short while, I was also a spokesperson for the IATF. On November 15, 2021, I was designated as acting presidential spokesperson 
until I was called on by former President Duterte to chair the Civil Service Commission on March 4, 2022. I took my oath before President Duterte on March 7 and officially assumed my post as ad interim chairperson of the Civil Service Commission on March 8, 2022. Then I stepped down as chair upon adjournment of the 18th Congress last June 2022. Fortunately, I was once again called and sworn in as chairperson of the CSC by President Ferdinand Bombong Marcos Jr. on June 30, 2022. In the combined period of more than five months that I've served as ad interim chair, I've seen the passion and dedication of our civil servants in the CSC to fulfill their mandate despite the challenges posed by the pandemic. And this is best exemplified through the various programs, policies, and accomplishments of our commission since I assumed my post, to name a few, the safe on-site conduct of three civil service professional and sub-professional examinations last March, June, and August of this year. The conduct of the fire officer exam, the penology officer exam, basic competency on local treasury examination, the intermediate competency and local treasury examination, the career service examination for foreign service officers, a 93.59% resolution rate of received and referred complaints via our contact center ng Bayan, a 98.51% overall satisfaction rating from customer feedback and the satisfaction survey among 16,000 respondents, a 100% complaints referral rate, providing learning and development programs for government workers, promulgation of policies on flexible work arrangements for government workers and officials, the evaluation of nominations for the 2022 search for outstanding government workers, and the selection of beneficiaries to the Pamanang Lingkod Bayani, our corporate social responsibility undertaking, recognizing civilian public servants killed in the line of duty. Under this new commission, Madam Chair, your honors, I'm committed to working towards a CSC that is future ready in public service delivery. This we will achieve through better ways of doing business by modernizing the modes of service delivery through digitization and digitalization of systems and processes. We will pursue the conduct of our digital maturity assessment and the development of our digital transformation roadmap. We shall transition to electronic personal data sheet or PPDS utilization and improve and timely update the inventory of government human resource. We endeavor to institutionalize a bureaucracy-wide human resource information system that will integrate the HRMIS system of the entire bureaucracy to reduce repetitive HR transactions through automation. Our ambition for the civil service exams is to expand the conduct of computerized exams while studying the feasibility of conducting exams online. Even for the appointments process, we envision to shift this to digital and online. On enabling our public human capital's professional development and growth through learning and development initiatives, the CSC shall work on the implementation of an online learning management system and update the competency framework for our public sector. We must be able to properly identify core competencies, leadership competencies, organizational competencies, and functional competencies so we can correctly conduct competency assessment as our basis for learning and development, recruitment, selection, placement, and other HR interventions. To improve our services, these competency assessments and training needs assessments must also be made available online. Our mission is to take care of our civil servants and to make civil service a truly rewarding and professional calling. Your Honors, I've always believed that we are all born into this world to serve in whatever capacity we can and to create good in the lives of others. As I stand before this august body, in, I am committed to maximize my education experience and life lessons to the best of my ability to lead the transformation of our CSC with the support of all the hardworking and dedicated civil servant heroes of the commission. Together, we at the CSC strive to realize our outcome of a professional government workforce composed of the most competent, technology-abled, and adaptive civil servants, future-ready, and in always serving Filipinos better. 
I've submitted all my personal and professional details in the documentary submissions. I humbly submit myself for your consideration and pray for the opportunity to continue my service. Sana po sa pangalawang pagkakataong ito, makuha ko na po ang matamis na oo ng Commission on Appointments. I'm now ready to answer any questions or clarifications. Thank you very much for this hearing, Your Honors. Thank you very much. The appointee is now ready to respond to any comment or question from the members. Uh, are there people? Yes. Uh, uh, Congressman Sagabaria. Okay. Thank you very much, Madam Chair, President. Uh, to our incoming commission, uh, Commissioner of the Chairman, Chairman. Well, uh, Mr. Chairman, as I say, I have a proposed bill uh, pending in Congress, and it has been there for since 2016. Well, nothing has happened well, until now. I would like to hear your comment on this about creating a human resource management office in every city and municipality in the whole country. What can you say about this? That's a very laudable initiative, um, Madam, Madam Chair. Uh, in fact, it is one of the priority legislations to be submitted by the Civil Service Commission before Congress. Um, the idea is to create an HRMO office in all cities and municipalities. Uh, but for fourth class and fifth class municipalities, at least a permanent HRM officer. Um, this is a priority legislation. Uh, if given the chance and the blessing of the commissioner appointments, um, I will be leading the delegation of the CSC in presenting this to Congress, the House of Representatives tomorrow and next week before uh, Senator Bong Revilla as he chairs the commission. Uh, the committee handling uh, civil service commission. So in addition, so tomorrow you will go to Congress and you are going to present this idea of creating such. Is that, am I right? Yes. Uh, during the organizational meetings in both committees in the House and Senate. Senate, we will be manifesting our full support for that very laudable bill. And I hope that uh, under this Congress, it will become a law. Okay. Thank you very much. That's all, Madam Chair. Uh, thank you. Congressman Sagabaria, are there any more? Uh, we now recognize Senator Risa Hontiveros. Thank you, uh, Madam Chair. I'm Buntag, Buntag Chair Nograles. Um, first, sir, on the on precarious work in the public sector. Uh, in an interview, Commissioner Eileen Lizada mentioned that there are 150,000 unfilled positions in the civil service while 633,000 more positions are covered by job orders and contract of service or JOs at saka COS. And yung 150,000 po is just under 10% of the current total of 1.8 million government workers. On the other hand, the 633,000 covered by JOs and COSs mean that about a third of the people doing work for government hold contractual positions, a very precarious position to be in. Considering these numbers, the hiring policies of government seem to have normalized precarious work and put workers covered merely by JOs and COSs in situations that might lead to exploitation and abuse. And at the very least, Chair, these policies deny around a third of workers in the public sector from enjoying the benefits and stability of regular employment. So could the committee please know if the Chair is comfortable with this state of affairs in the civil service? And may we know how he intends to widen the opportunities for regularization available to workers holding JO or NCOS positions and thereby include these workers within the ambit of government social protection programs. Thank you for the question, uh, Madam Chair. Uh, it is the position of the Civil Service Commission to actually have um, more of these vacancies filled up. The um, position of the Civil Service is we can provide better prof protection no, to our government workers if they are made part and parcel of the plantilla. That means makapasok po sila sa civil service. Nasa interest po ng civil service commission na makapasok po sila sa civil service. That being said, ang aming commission po are finding ways and means no, uh, 
drafting policies, passing policies to enable um, without sacrificing, of course, yung merit and fitness. No? Because that has always been the primordial um, standard no? namin sa civil service, papasok dapat based on merit and fitness. But that being said, syempre, gusto namin mas marami po ang ma-hire, mas maraming vacancies ang ma-fill up. Um, yung sa JOs and COs, um, uh, unfortunately, that issue by itself is something more within the ambit po ng COA at ng DBM. Only because it is charged on a different um, budgetary um, item, which is MOOE. Uh, kami sa civil service, papasok kami pag PS na po, personal services na po ang, ang, ang ginagamitan na item ng budget. Um, so, so yes, uh, we are looking for ways and means for, for more civil servants to be able to pass the, to be able to, for them to enter uh, civil service. And we will continue to uh, push uh, for more of our, um, va the vacancies, the current vacancies to be filled up. And for more civil servants, uh, for more of our Fili fellow Filipinos to enter into civil service. Salamat ka ayo, Chair. I'm really very glad and I'm sure the uh, government unions or associations are very glad to hear um, the Chair's <laughs> desire to fill up the unfilled positions, of course, without sacrificing merit and fitness. Um, but I was actually thinking also more about the possibility that the Commission, the CSE, is considering filling up those unfilled positions with some of those meritorious and fit who are now only under JO and COS uh, arrangements. So just thinking aloud lastly on this particular question, Chair, um, is there any possibility na ang CSC will work something out with COA and DBM to properly enable this kind of intra-bureaucracy um, change of status to happen? Yes. Actually, yung latest um, issuance ng DBM at um, COA po, um, states na hanggang December 31, 2022 na lamang po. No? And um, hopefully the agencies will now start absorbing um, more of the JOs and COs by that, um, by end of this year. Uh, ayoko pangunahan ano magiging decision ng DBN at ng COA, but um, there's also an ongoing discussion now with CSC together with DBM and COA in terms of what or how they will act on that, uh, that issuance. Uh, Anong next steps nila dun sa issuance na po na yun. Um, So we've been told that uh, um, DBM and, and COA is currently discussing that and kami naman po sa CSE, we're more than willing to lend a hand or even give our inputs. No, uh, Again, ang stand po ng CSE is that we obviously want more vacancies to be filled and uh, more, more, more Filipinos to enter into civil service. Thank you, Chair. It's really good to hear that uh, there is at least such an ongoing discussion at asahan ko na yung inputs ng CSC sa discussion na iyon will be guided by that spirit expressed by the Chair, the desire to uh, fill up more of the positions based on merit and fitness. Um, with respect po to social safety nets and other benefits, so to cite just one example, is it true po that the CSC has opposed proposals to include workers covered by JOs and COSs within the coverage of the expanded maternity leave law? Um. Again, not 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 in this present commission. We've not spoken about it. There's no, there's really no opposition from from this commission per se. Um, ang sa amin lamang po is that JOs and COs are not covered. Sa amin, no, it's it's under the ambit of COA and DBM. So yun lang po yung limitation ng CSC jan. We need to say um, it's not under our jurisdiction po. Yes, I understand, uh, Chair. Um, but if the CSC has not opposed, and I'm glad to hear that, if the Commission has not opposed the inclusion of these workers, these uh, women workers, well, men as well, because the law includes uh, um, a, a pass a leave to, to fathers, 
uh, if the uh, commission uh, has not opposed this inclusion of these workers within the coverage of the said law, how will or how could the CSC ensure that uh, workers covered by JOs and COSs enjoy all the benefits workers are entitled to uh, by law? Um, kahit alimbawa in terms of making representation for them sa COA at DBM po. Um, like I said, Madam Chair, um, there's an ongoing discussion uh, between COA and uh, DBM. No, um, Of course, we're, we're mindful na, that uh, JOs and COs are covered, can be classified as the informal sector, and therefore the benefits that accrue to them are based on the SSS law and the SSS benefits. Um, but, but again, um, it, it is something that uh, I think it's ripe for discussion already since ang deadline or ang expiration po nung sa latest issuance ng DBM at ng, ng uh, COA is December 31 of this year. So maganda mapag-usapan na rin po yung ano yung mga benefits that other additional benefits that can accrue or may accrue uh, para sa mga JOs and COs. Salamat kayo, Chair. It's, uh, at the very least, it's always good to hear that something is ripe for discussion kasi at least kung pag-uusapan man lang, then it becomes visible uh, sa, sa public or sa government conversation. Um, moving now to ILO Convention 151, otherwise known as the Public Service Labor Relations Convention. It's been five years po since the Senate ratified this uh, ILO Convention. Uh, I filed uh, Senate Bill 587 or the Public Service Relations Act, as part of my commitment to honor ILO 151, which, among others, grants workers in the public sector the right to organize, uh, equitably settle disputes, and participate in the determination of the terms and conditions of their employment. So may I know, Chair, how the CSC intends to implement ILO Convention 151 for the benefit of workers employed in the country's public sector? And in addition... Will the CSC lobby for the passage of enabling legislation for ILO Convention 151? Dahil yun po yung obligasyon na ibinigay sa amin when our country ratified the convention. Kailangan magpasak kami nitong enabling law. Yes. Um, meron po kaming office sa CSC called the HRRO. And one of the um, responsibilities and functions of that office is to process itong... Uh, accreditation among workers organizations in government that passes through us sa, sa commission and uh, yours truly tayo po yung ako po yung pumipirma ng ating uh, pag uh, accredit ng mga uh, workers organizations there and since i sat one of the first uh, papers or issuances that I, I i i signed as soon as i sat as uh, chair of CSE were those accreditation papers so we continue to accredit mga workers' organizations in government. We continue to also help them in their CNA, um, uh, Collective Negotiation Agreements. Uh, we continue to recognize them. They pass through a process. Um, and our HRR of office is uh, very active no, in um, checking all the papers and making sure that uh, everything's in order before I sign them. Um, and of course, we are supportive of any moves uh, ng Congress, ng Senate, uh, to, to strengthen no, uh, yung mga rights ng ating mga workers in government. Including, Chair, yung pagpasa ng enabling law sa ILO Convention 151? Yeah, we've, uh, Madam Chair, we, we ov like I said, we support the right to organize, the right to negotiate for benefits. Uh, CSE supports public sector unionism. Salamat po. And I'm, I'm not mistaken in interpreting that as kapag dininig na yung bill ko at ng mga kasama, mga colleagues, ay, it will officially receive the support. They will officially receive the support of CSC. Yes, Madam Chair. Salamat, salamat kayo. Um, now, sir, on the National Government Right Sizing Program. Um, during the State of the Nation Address, the President identified the NGRP as a priority legislative measure. May we know the position of the chair uh, on this program and the rationale behind the position of the chair or which the chair has chosen to adopt uh, and what legal basis will be used to support the implementation of such a program? Well, we believe, Madam Chair, that uh, 
part and parcel of the presidential prerogative um, is to organize the executive branch, to organize the offices under the executive branch. Uh, we, as we interpret it, the, the bill on right sizing is a measure to ensure that there are funds uh, that, that can cover um, the reorganization of the executive branch. So it is primarily a way for Congress to ensure the availability of funds for such moves to reorganize the government. Um, that being said, even without the right sizing law, there's already been, um, there's already a Republic Act 6656, no? which deals with reorganization in government. And the role of the CSC has always been to ensure the welfare of government workers who are affected by reorganization. So we will continue to play that role. Uh, we will continue to make decisions, uh, issue policy, uh, make other issuances that protect the rights of our government workers in any reorganization, um, including the separation pay, uh, which primarily I think is the most important part of the right sizing bill now pending in Congress. For any affected worker that they will be receiving their just compensation, but for us in the civil service, we will make sure that um, even in when, when government uh, agencies or offices are merged, if they are simplified, if there are any other movements because of government reorganization, then um, protection and po ang security of tenure ng ating mga government workers. And those who opt to, to leave government and take on the separation packages, that they will be justly compensated. Um, salamat kay Mr. Chair. It's good to hear uh, among uh, all the uh, points that the chair mentioned. Also, the uh, the commitment to to protect security of tenure for those already uh, enjoying it. Uh, in this regard, what is the current status of the implementation of the M NGRP, and how much will this program cost or save and or save? I have not computed, actually, because, um, again, it's, a, it's the bill will be coming from, um, from the legislators, and it will be something in terms of how much uh, that would be under the Department of Budget and Management to compute. It's fair enough, Mr. Chair. We will ask the department that uh, when we hear the bill or bills. Uh, kanina po sa opening remarks ng chair, he mentioned uh, core values of the CSC that he himself uh, uh, embraces, including excellence and integrity. Uh, former UPNC PAG Dean Alex, uh, Dr. Alex Brillantes noted that any right-sizing program should be anchored on more than economic justifications, bagamat itatanong din namin yun pag dininig na yung mga bill, should be anchored on accountability, equity, and ethics as well. So how will the CSC, under the leadership of the chair, embed considerations of accountability, equity, and ethics in the design and implementation of the NGRP? If the chair would like to add uh, to what he has already shared with the committee. Um, perhaps... Um... Well, well, ang limitations kasi ng CSE as a constitutional uh, body is that uh, we will make our uh, representations when it goes to Congress. No, I, I foresee na pag pinag-usapan na ito sa mga committees, both in the House and the Senate, then we will be asked our opinions. Um, as As it is, um, kami naman sa civil service, syempre, we've already made decisions no, based on previous reorganizations uh, done in other offices. Um, ang tinitingnan namin usually is if may comparable, comparable ba yung position na binigay sa kanya sa bagong position um, na magkakaroon ng priority muna uh, yung pag-fill up ng mga new positions or comparable positions before getting 
from outside. Um, kami sa civil service, we also act on disciplinary cases. If disciplinary cases are filed against erring civil servants, pag may admin cases. So I, I believe um, siguro yung pinaka-role ng CSC in that regard would be when complaints are filed. Other than that, over and beyond the right sizing, ang ginagawa po namin is yung, yung aming uh, core values, we also try to instill them in our learning and development platforms. When we have learning and development initiatives for civil servants, we make sure to include those core values um, into um, those uh, learning and development uh, programs. So not on right sizing per se, but I, I believe that um, we uh, can push for those core values to be imbibed and practiced by civil servants in, in many different, in the different functions that the civil, civil service performs. Salamat, Chair. Um, so, kanina na pag-usapan na natin bahagya yung mga public sector unions. So, has CSC initiated a consultative process uh, with public sector unions and associations vis-a-vis -vis the NGRP? And um, how will the CSC ensure that their concerns are considered in the program's implementation? Um. We con continuously, even without the right sizing, Madam Chair, patuloy naman yung engagement ng CSC with the, with the unions. Eh. Um, meron tayong tinatawag, we are a member, this, this representation is a member and chair of the PSLMC, the Public, Public Sector Labor Management Council. Uh, we continue to engage them in different ways. No? Um, so, um, pag pinag-usapan na right sizing, I'm sure we can also use the same avenues to discuss. I, I think uh, many of the concerns um, ng those who will be affected by right sizing or those who are concerned about right sizing, and when I talk about uh, workers organizations and associations, um, we we can we will have this we can pursue this initiative, Madam Chair, to discuss their concerns through our avenues and the venues uh, with the, between the CSC, uh, through the PSLMC, and the other venues and avenues that we have in engaging our workers' organizations. I'm sure, Thank Chair, you, you um, may I yes, interested? I think uh, our Senate President has prepared lunch for both the House of Representatives and the Senate. So <laughs> we're all hungry. Can we limit the questions to uh, uh, shorter questions? Thank you very much. <laughs> Answer yes. now. Yes, Thank Madam you. Chair. All right, Madam Chair. Ayoko namang ano, um, dead mahin yung gutom natin. So isang huling tanong na lang kay CSC Chair. Um, and then i, i make of record ko na lang yung huling subject sana and would appreciate if the chair would like to uh, inform the committee about his response to that last subject. Uh, kahit in writing na lang po, I mean moving forward habang sila nag-chair na ng CSC with, with our confirmation. Uh, uh, sasabihin ko lang sana po kanina, uh, chair, madam chair, na I'm sure yung mga labor partners po namin sa PSLMC ay matutuwang uh, marinig yung kasasabi nyo lamang and that they are also looking forward to continue engaging with the chair, uh, pati po dun sa magiging proseso ng uh, NGRP. Kasi for one po in its update to its members, yung mismong Senado uh, na na public sector union dito sa Senate noted that the right sizing would result in a massive layoff Yun yung concern po nila, thereby increasing our unemployment rate. And to quote their update chair, uh, losing a job in this difficult time when people suffer from a health and economic crisis is unjust and unbearable. So lastly na lang po, Chair, uh, 
para sa inyong kaalaman and if you would also like to inform us your response, tatanong ko rin sana yung CSC policy agenda na as the Central Human Resource Agency of the government, may we know uh, your current assessment of human resource development in the bureaucracy. May we also know the current and future plans for human resource development and how to ensure that these plans result in an accountable and ethical bureaucracy. And lastly, um, ito, very interesting uh, para sa akin, and I, I'm sure para sa amin bilang legislators, there's ongoing conversation kasi, Chair, about the need uh, to enact a civil service code uh, as a counterpart to the private sector's labor code. So may we know, even if in writing after this hearing, if the Chair is open to the idea and what his guiding principles and recommendations will be. So dagan salamat, uh, Chair Nograles. Thank you, Madam Chair. Thank you very much, Senator Risa, uh, Senator Toll. For your manifestation. Thank you. Uh, this is not really a a question, or perhaps this this may lead to a question. But I'm in full support. Uh, I could have recused. I, I could have inhibited because the nominee here is my law school fraternity brat. But I I cannot uh, do, do away uh, with my presence because I fully support uh, his nomination as the new civil service. Commission Chairman, but I have just two questions. Uh, perhaps just one question for point five. Point five. Point five is part of your resume, uh, Chairman Nograles. This is on page. Uh, it has something to do with your being a former corps commander while studying at the Philippine Science High School. Is that correct? Uh, that's correct. Gotcha. And you earned a CAT leadership award. What is CAT? CAT? What is CAT? Citizens Army Training. Citizens Army Training. So you you had the Citizens Army Training background. And my assumption is that you are in full support of the restoration of the ROTC. Uh, yes, Your Honor. Can you repeat that? Yes, Your Honor. Yes, no, yes. Yes, Your Honor. So having having uh, having said that, my other point five is this: I have I have I have been receiving I have been receiving complaints from past cadets, parents of uh, past cadets, and now uh, PNP officers under the PNPA regime. Apparently, there was an involvement of the Civil Service Commission. There is a Civil Service Commission Resolution 020122. This was not under your uh, term. This was 2002, year 2002. Two questions or a question was raised. Are PNPA cadets? subject to the civil service rules or are they government employees the civil service commission ruled both issues must be answered in the negative it led to the low moral condition of the pnpa cadets for the last two decades they are not recognized as government employees and yet when they graduate they will be police lieutenants. Are you aware of this? No, no, Your Honor. I'm not uh, aware of that resolution. Yes. And a resolution of the Civil Service Commission can be reversed. Yes, if especially, Your Honor, since we are a new commission. All three of us are new members, obviously not members of the commission that uh, passed that resolution. Yes, so if it can be reversed, it can be modified and change of circumstances probably can, can lead to a new resolution that will accept the PNPA cadets as government employees. In fact, they are receiving salaries. They are receiving uh, emoluments, honorarium, etc., etc. They are use, using government facilities uh, like the Philippine Military Academy cadets. They are considered government employees. Perhaps your honor, if confirmed, 
can do something to initiate a reversal motu proprio of this unfair ruling. In behalf of our PNPA cadets, those cadets who studied in 2002 are now uh, perhaps colonels or higher or generals. Some of them might, might have retired. So do we see a, 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 an can we foresee an initiative coming from your end, if confirmed, to reverse this deplorable and perhaps unacceptable Civil Service Commission resolution? In behalf of our PNPA cadets, you being also a pro-ROTC uh, government official. Uh, yes, Madam Chair, I am joined here. This morning, by my our two no, commissioners. No, but my, my answer is my so my request is yes are, or yes or no. Yes. yes, we will review. We will review, Madam Chair. Yes. So my last point five question, Madam Chair, is this: Since our good uh, nominee, my dear fraternity Brad, like your dad, is always looking beyond forward. Forward-looking, so to speak. Is there a possibility you have a good think tank group in your civil service uh, commission uh, plethora of forward-looking bureaucrats? Is there a possibility of enticing, making our ROTC core commanders and the other junior officers as civil service employees with emoluments and honorarium while they are serving as ROTC officers while studying in various colleges and universities. Can it be done through a resolution? We will have to study the... A legal look for a legal basis, uh, Your Honor. I cannot give a categorical answer at the moment, but we commit to review the proposal. Perhaps in your interagency coordination meetings with CHED, with DepEd, with the Armed Forces of the Philippines, with the DND, you can raise this item motto proprio because it will entice our youth to join the revived ROTC program, if they will have some small stipends to be received uh, coming from the government, similar to what our cadets from the PMA would be, uh, are now receiving and the PNPA cadets. Is that a fair proposal as, an, as a CAT, uh, core command, former core commander, and now on the verge of becoming the CSC chairman? Uh, what thing? was your rank before as CAT? Core Commander po. Uh, how is it called? Uh, Lieutenant Colonel. Lieutenant Colonel Nograles. Are you amenable to that? Uh, Madam Chair, we commit to study the proposal. Again, we'll have to look uh, for the legal basis. Uh, commission, for the first time in history, is composed of three lawyers. Tatlo po kami abogado na sa commission ngayon. So pag-aaralan po namin... Hanapan namin ang legal basis. And I, I will ask that again during your budget deliberations. I have no further questions, uh, Madam Chair. My last point five was uh, consume. Thank Marat. you, Madam Senator Toll. Okay. Madam Chair. Uh, are there any more? Uh, Madam, Madam Chair, 90 seconds. Uh, we recognize Senator Allen. Thank you. Thank you, Madam Chair. Good afternoon. Magandang tanghali to our uh, soon-to-be chairperson ng civil service. Um, first question, nagkaroon kayo ng civil service exams this year, no? Uh, yes. March? Madam Chair, tatlong beses po. Tatlong beses. Uh, ilan po ang kumuha ng exam? More or less lang, more or less. Three, combined all three, mga 300,000. Buti pa kayo nakapag-exam, ang UP ayaw pa rin mag-upcut. Baka dapat... Uh, Makausap kayo ng uh, UP, di hamak na mas malaki ang budget nila sa inyo eh. Pero sila ayaw pa rin mag-upcut. Um, going back to the social protection ng ating pong mga members ng uh, GSIS at civil service, 
we had a hearing, hindi pa tayo nag-GSIS, SSS pa lang. Sa SSS, sa 40 million members, mga 20 million daw are inactive. So I wonder kung ilan ang inactive sa GSIS, they're preparing the data. Pero I'd like to ask if uh, the Civil Service Commission and GSIS do have um, annual or regular meetings uh, to thresh out yung social protection nga nung, uh, nung mga civil servants natin? Um, and since I sat, wala pa po, but I commit na we will reach out to the GSIS. I think if ma-finalize na rin yung pag-reorg ng GSIS, I think the uh, entire government structure is under reorg now. We're looking into how we can help the 20 million na inactive sa SSS para siguradong meron silang uh, retirement fund. So I'm talking about, for example, yung nagkonsihal, one term, three terms, di ba? Tapos hindi nila napagpatuloy. So how we can help them uh, to make sure na pag-retire nila, may makukuha naman sila. Um, lastly, may... I'd just like to take advantage that there's so much experience in the room uh, across the hall. Uh, Congresswoman uh, Mercado Revilla was mayor. Katabi po niya was uh, governor. Um, may vice governor po tayo dito. May uh, former governor doon. Um, on this side, uh, kanina, mayor ng San Juan ay katabi ko. Dito naman, the other mayor of San Juan. The better, the better. The better mayor. <laughs> The better one, uh, mayor ng Tagaytay, governor ng, uh, ng Ilocos Norte. Sa mga bansa na parliamentary, they have a permanent secretary, then they have a political secretary, di ba? So kung uh, elected ka at ikaw ang secretary of health, uh, ikaw yung elected na Secretary of Health, pero meron kang permanent secretary sa ilalim mo, ikaw ang policy pero siya nag-execute, siya yung civil servant. So napansin ko, pag nagpalit ng mayor, parating issue yung papalitan yung department heads. But since sila ay uh, civil servants na protected under law, supposedly walang problema. But in reality, tatakutin, kakasuhan, uh, uh, looking ng ibang position. So i just like to suggest, and uh, again, no, um, I was not a former mayor or governor, so mas alam to ng mga colleagues natin who were. Baka we can look into uh, the civil service working with both houses na magkaroon ng ganun sistema. Meron kang permanent department head, which is actually parang a deputy, pero the mayor or governor can appoint yung political na department head. So you'll have the best of two worlds, no? You'll have the mayor appoint their cabinet, but at the same time, for continuity, institutional integrity, institutional memory, ay meron kang um, uh, seso at meron kang civil serv servant na, no? As you, we've been doing in the department sa uh, national government, no? So, adhering to my chairperson na uh, Iklian, I will stop there, but I'd like to greet you a belated happy birthday. I've been reviewing all of your qualifications and experience, including your dance moves in the internet. And uh, it all seems to be naman, uh, quite exceptional. Thank you, Madam uh, Chair. Thank you, Senator Allen. We now hear from Senator Poe. Yes, mine is just a manifestation, uh, an observation into the personality of our candidate here today. I noticed that he's uh, really nonpartisan. Even if he's been appointed by one administration or another, he treats everybody from both sides of the camp fairly. And I think that is a very um, much needed mindset of a civil service head. Um, well, as you know, you were able to cross the bridge from being your father's uh, political officer to being a congressman and then being appointed by, uh, well, one of your uh, family's, um, how, how should I call it? Uh, well, uh, friendly competition within your area, right? I mean, you were still appointed. So that speaks well about your personality being uh, very amiable 
being diplomatic, uh, fair, I would say. And of course, uh, obviously, you, you must be intelligent because you went to Pisay. I, so you're you're very qualified. So I support you in your nomination. I also ask our colleagues to para wag nang umiyak si Miss Eileen Lazada. Si si Miss Lazada kasi nakatrabaho ko yan, uh, chairman of the Committee on Public Services Transportation, and I know that she is a very feisty uh, government official in the LTFRB who well it's not her nomination that we're talking about but I would like to say that if you have her support I'm sure she's vetted um, your process already so that's all thank you Ms. Ma Madam Chairman si Senator Gosa ano na lang sa floor Thank you, uh, Senator Poe. Uh, we want to hear from Sen uh, Congressman Marcoleta. There's only one question, Madam Chair. I was reading the profile and investigation report, Madam Chair, furnished by the Secretariat of the Commission. And it says here that Chairman Carlo reportedly met his better half, who was then the muse during the holding of one Ios de Davao Rigodon event, where he substituted for his uncle, then the organization president, to be her dance partner. Chairman Carlo described said meeting as love at first sight. Question, do you confirm that? Mr. Chair? Yes, Madam Chair, with all my heart. Thank you, Madam Chair. We now recognize uh, Congressman Padiernos. Uh, Madam Chair, uh, Senate, Mr. President, uh, since narinig ko yung mga sinabi ni Senator Tol, uh, Senator Po, mukhang okay naman lahat. Eh, no? So, Madam Chair, I also support wholeheartedly the confirmation of Chairman Carlo Nograles. Thank you, uh, Congressman Padiernos. Uh, we now hear from Senator J.V. Herzado. Thank you, Madam Chair. Um, just like, ano, siguro to mga point five lang din. <laughs> uh, kasi medyo parokyal tong concern ko but um, medyo nagiging desperate na rin kasi mga kasama being a former mayor of San Juan but uh, first I'd like to congratulate in advance my batchmate in the 15th Congress probably one of the nicest persons I've met one of the most capable actually he has become the face of the IATF na miss ka namin doon partner and you did very well you've explained very, uh, the situation very well napakagaling no, na miss ka namin, but um, I, I am proud that uh, I have worked with you uh, in the 15th Congress. Kaya lang, meron akong concern. I, uh, na, na, natanong ko na kay Commissioner Eileen. Uh, Ito, this concerns the terminal leave, no? Um, chairman, uh, chair, chairman to be, what, yung terminal leave ba, what is it? Is that, that, from what I know, that belongs to the employee already. Pag-retire tama ba? Yes, that's correct. That's earned by them through years of service? Yes, that's correct, Madam Chair. Ang uh, tanong ko lang po kasi doon po sa amin, um, there, are, there were 30 uh, employees kasi po nagkaroon ng change of administration. Yun yung problema eh. I think I'm, put, I'm bringing this up because it happens all over. Hindi lang naman po sa amin, but um, there are 30 employees that after three years, hindi pa ho nila nakukuha yung terminal leave sila. At present, yung iba nakuha na, kailangan lang umamin ka um, o magbaw. No? Um, there are present 11 terminal leaves for mayor signature and clearance on hold 6. So, 70 na lang po. And ang nakakalungkot po ron, there are other there are employees that have been serving the municipality back then. Maliit pa ho ako nun eh. Uh, 31 years, 35 years of service. So that, from what I know, era nila talaga yon. That belongs to them. So, 
yung cases like this, no, that there if there are changes in administration, especially kung hindi friendly, it happens, I think, it happens sa uh, all over the country sa iba't ibang LGU, uh, can the Civil Service uh, Commission help those employees? Because I, from what I know, as what you said, these are hard-earned money that is theirs. Yun lang po. Um, probably if the Civil Service Commission can help. Kasi kawawa rin naman eh. They, siguro nagkataon lang that uh, they serve a particular uh, particular uh, <laughs> particular uh, um, political uh, side but I think they serve also yung LGU as a whole. No? So, I'm just bringing this up because na lulungkot na rin po ako kasi three, through more than three years already has passed. And uh, people like, yung malaking bagay po sa kanila yun eh. Yung 31 years of service, 25 years, 20 years of service, medyo malaki po yun. That's very, uh, that will be a big help for their retirement. And I think it will, it it happens also in other um, LGUs. So yun lang po, uh, Mr. Chairman, but I, uh, Ms. Madam Chair, I strongly indoor, um, support our our chairman of the civil service uh, commission i have known him uh, since uh, days in congress as i mentioned he's one of the nicest most amiable a man of integrity um yun nga lang sa naunahan ako ni sen alan eh magti tiktok ka pa ba <laughs> kahit na chairman ka na <laughs> but kidding aside um, you are more than qualified so i uh, endorse you i just made this manifestation because i'm seeking the support um, of people no that are um, that are pro that victims of political uh, um, situations thank you madam chair uh, uh, madam thank chair. you senator hershito may we hear now uh, the manifestation of uh, congressman marcoleta with regards to the opposition of the confirmation of uh, uh, chairman ograles Thank you, Madam Chair. Uh, the, the commission uh, is in receipt of, a, of an opposition filed by a certain oh, former Ambassador Hermin Hildo C. Cruz opposing the nomination of uh, Chair Carlo, Madam Chair. But uh, I, I, I saw that the uh, opposition is not really an opposition to his appointment, he was uh, just trying to elicit the opinion of uh, Chairman Carlo in regard to the past actions taken by uh, his uh, predecessors in relation to the gripes filed by Ambassador Cruz to the appointees of previous administrations, like uh, he has gripes against uh, the appointment of the Ambassador to Greece, Ambassador to Iraq, Ambassador to Czech Republic, Czech Republic, Ambassador to Argentina, Netherlands, Great Britain, Brazil, Poland, the Holy See, United Arab Emirates, Repub the permanent representative to Geneva, Ambassador to Turkey, Geneva, Indonesia, etc., Madam Chair. I, I read the uh, position taken by the CSC, the previous, uh, the predecessors of Chair Carlo. And it, it correctly stated their position that the CSC has no jurisdiction over the actions of the appointing power, the president of this country. Uh, what uh, Mr. Cruz could have done is to have filed a, uh, a petition for impeachment, probably in the House of Representatives, is if he believes that these are actionable, uh, uh, well, if they, if they are uh, actionable uh, cases, for, for impeachment, Madam Chair. So I don't think the this body is in a position also to um, to accept this, considering that it, it is also not within our jurisdiction to pass judgment on the appointees made by the previous presidents, Madam Chair. Thank you. Thank you, uh, Congressman Marcoleta, Majority Floor Leader. Madam Chair, I've known uh, former Congressman Carlo. He was appropriation chairman. I was his vice chair. I can attest to his uh, competence and integrity. I therefore move to recommend to the plenary for the commission to confirm 
I'll move second. I'll second. The ad interim appointment of Mr. Carlo Alexei Bendigo Nograles as chairman of the Civil Service Commission for a term expiring on February 2, 2029, Vice Alicia De La Rosa Bala. I so move, Mr. Chair. Madam Chair, before we act on the motion, may I be honored to second the motion? I'm makabawi naman po ako sa kanya. I know in the last time he was here, I was uh, one of those who sought for uh, the deferment of all the appointees until the new administration had come into place. I also lobbied for his information that he be retained as CSC chairman in this administration because I really believe in this gentleman, your honor. Uh, his wife happens to be the comadre of, my wife happens to be the comadre of, of this uh, appointee that makes me a adopted compadre. Uh, sir, carry on. Uh, you're doing a great job. And I read in the, in your, in the, they give us a dossier of every appointee. At nakalagay po dito, misperceived by some as moody or temperamental. Close, open and close parenthesis, masungit. <laughs> Madam Chair, I object to this because in my dealings with this gentleman, I have never, never seen him masungit or temperamental at all. He's one of the most amiable and the, uh, pleasing uh, uh, personalities of government. And I'm a good friend of your father. My hair is standing because I miss your dad. And I'm sure he's looking up from heaven. Very proud of your achievement today. So I second the motion of our majority floor leader. And not a second to waste. It should be appointed as soon as possible. Uh, Madam Chair, Madam Chair. Madam Chair. Five seconds yes. lang po, support lang uh -huh. po ako kay, ano, kay uh, Pelo Dabawenyo. Namin na ito siya. Opo, yun lang po. Okay, go ahead. Na. Okay. Five seconds lang po, uh, support lang po ako sa Pelo Dabawenyo ko po sa kanyang uh, confirmation. That's all. There is a motion to recommend to the plenary for the commission to confirm the ad interim appointment of Mr. Carlo Alexi Nograles as chairman of Civil Service Commission for a term expiring in February 2, 2029, Vice Alicia De La Rosa Bala. Is there any objection? There being none, uh, the same is hereby approved. Congratulations, Chair Nograles. You may now be excused. Thank you very much. Okay. Majority floor leader. Madam Chair, I learned so much in the Senate. It's only in the Senate that there's a 0.5 question and five seconds. <laughs> Madam Chair, there being no other matters to discuss, I move to adjourn the meeting. Second, second the motion. You. On motion of the majority floor leader, Julie seconded. There being no objection. The meeting is hereby adjourned. We will have lunch.
for these great people of yours. Lord Father God, we are here today and we are here every Wednesday <clears throat> to discern, Lord, whether to confirm or deny the nominations, Lord, of people who are going to serve you and serve our country. Please give us the discernment, Lord, the power of discernment, whether that person is worthy or not. And when they are worthy, please give them wisdom. We pray for our Senate President, our Chairman, and our Vice Chairperson, and all members. May we be true to our oath, and may we do a good job, Lord, in um, looking at the qualification of each and every nominee. We lift this up to you, and thank you in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Please remain standing for the singing of the Philippine National Anthem. Thank you. Secretary, please roll, call the roll. The Honorable Members of the Commission on Appointments, Maria Lourdes Nancy S. Binay, Virginel Gibiron, Alan Peter Compañero S. Cayetano, Joseph Victor G. Ejercito, Francis Chis G. Escudero, Jingoy Ejercito Estrada, Albert S. Garcia on official travel abroad, Greg G. Gasataya, Christopher Bongo, Ramon N. Guico Jr., Lisa Ontiveros, Loren Legarda, Oscar Oka G. Malapitan, Rodante D. Marcoleta, Aimi R. Marcos, Lani Mercado Revilla, Jose Gay G. Padiernos, Johnny T. Pimentel, Grace Poe, Jordine Jesus M. Rimualdo, Manuel T. Sagarbaria, Francis Tol N. Tolentino, Luis Raymond L. Ray F. Villafuerte Jr., Cincha A. Villar. The chair is present. With 22 members uh, in person, one member online, total members 23. The chair declares the president of the quorum, majority leader. Yes, Joy Leader. I'm sorry. <laughs> Mr. Chair, I move to dispense with the reading of the journal of the plenary session held on August 31, 2022, and consider the same as approved. Is there any objection to the motion? There being none, the motion is approved. Mr. Chair, I ask that we now proceed to consider the election of another Assistant Majority Floor Leader of the Commission on Appointments. There being no objection to the motion, the motion is approved. Mr. Chair, I move that the body elect Senator Joseph Victor G. Ejercito as one of the Assistant Majority Floor Leaders of the Commission. Is there any objection to the motion? There being none, Senator Joseph Victor Ejercito is hereby elected as one of the Assistant Majority floor leaders of this distinguished body, the Commission on Appointments. Majority Leader. Mr. Chair, may we request that Senator Joseph Victor Ejercito approve, approach the rostrum to take his oath of office as Assistant Majority Leader of the Commission. Yes, may we request uh, our distinguished Assistant Majority Floor Leader to come to the podium. Does he want anyone to witness? Maybe a relative in the plenary? Okay. If none, it's all right. 
Mau mau gue tes? Ya. Mau gue tes? Eh. Support 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 ya. Support support ya. Digacha. Please raise your right hand at uh, basahin mo na lang po ang inyong out of office para mapabilis po tayo. Ako si Joseph Victor Ejercito ng San Juan Metro Manila. Nailalala sa kontukulan bilang Assistant Majority Leader, Assistant Majority Floor Leader ng Commission on Appointments, ay tintim na nanunumpa. Natutuparin ko ng buong husay at katapatan sa abot aking kakayahan ang mga tungkulin ng aking kasulukuyang katungkulan at ang mga iba pang pakaran na gagampanan ko sa ilalim ng Republika ng Pilipinas. Sa aking patataguyod at pagtatanggol, ang saligang batas ng Pilipinas, na tunay na mananalig at tatalima ako rito, na susundin ko ang mga batas, mga kautosan legal at mga dekreto pinaira na masadyang itinakdang may kapangirihan na Republika ng Pilipinas. At kusa kong babalikating ang panagotang ito na walang anumang pasubali o hangarin mo iwas. Kasi yan naman ako ng Diyos. Congratulations po! Thank you. Congratulations. Thank you. Congratulations. Hag naman dyan, hag! Thank you, sir. Thank you, sir. Hindi, wala ka mo, wala ka mo pala. Ito doon. Hindi, sir. Hindi, sir. Thank you, Jingwa. Thank you. Okay. Congratulations to our assistant uh, majority floor leader. Majority leader? Mr. Chair, it's a historical photo. What just happened? I know. We would have wanted the hug. But the handshake was sufficient okay. at this point. Congratulations. <laughs> Mr. Chair, may we now proceed to consider the election of the vacant committee chairmanships and vice chairmanships? Is there any objection to the... Motion of the majority leader, there being none, motion is approved. Mr. Chair, I move that the body elect as chairperson to the following standing committees of the Commission on Appointments. To the Committee on Environment and Natural Resources, Senator Lauren Legarda. To the Committee on Agrarian Reform, Senator Maria Lourdes Nancy S. Binay. Is there any objection? There being none, uh, the aforementioned are hereby elected to their positions. Mr. Chair, I move that the body elect as committee vice chairpersons of the following. To the Committee on Foreign Affairs, Senator Francis Tol N. Tolentino. To the Committee on National Defense, Senator Jingoy Ejercito Estrada. Senator Amy R. Marcos. Senator Maria Lourdes Nancy S. Binay. To the Committee on Agriculture, Senator Cynthia A. Villar. Is there any objection to the appointments or the elections of this uh... Ladies and gentlemen, to vice chairmanships of this post, there being none, the motion is approved. Mr. Chair, may we now proceed to consider the amendment of the new rules of the Commission on Appointments and its standing committees. Is there any objection? There being none, please proceed. Mr. Chair, I move that the following provisions of the new rules of the Commission on Appointments and its standing committees be amended subject to style with the explanatory note and to read as follows. Number one, Section 24, Paragraph 6, Chapter 6 of the New Rules of the Commission, amending the 45-day extended period to substantially comply with the submission of the documentary requirements. Proposed amendment is that failure to substantially comply with the submission of the documentary requirements within the prescribed period shall be a ground for the rejection of the nomination or appointment. Is there any objection to the motion of the majority floor leader? May Senator Cayetano, you recognized? Mr. President, no objection from the minority, just a clarification. So the prescribed period will refer to Section 24, which states that uh, the nominee or appointee in coordination with the office to which he is appointed shall submit papers or documents containing the following data within 30 days, which shall be which shall only be extendable for another 15 days for justifiable reasons as may be determined by the commission from receipt of notice coming from the commission for the submission of the documentary requirements mentioned therein. Is that correct? 
Mr. Chair. Joint Leader. Mr. Chair, that's correct. Yes. So secondly, just a clarification, since the rule says that any amendments to the rules will take effect 15 days. 15 days after publication. So for all those who were appointed um, before this new this amendment becomes applicable, we will still follow the 45-day rule. That's correct, Mr. That's Chair. Correct. Yes. So with that clarification, there's no objection. Thank you. In addition, uh, effectivity is within 15 days. So all appointments within 15 days will be, uh, this uh, new rules will be effective. Yes. Thank, Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Thank you. There be, is there any objection to the motion majority for our leader? If there being none, the motion is approved. Mr. Chair, I also move to amend section 10, chapter 3, new rules of the commission. Insert a paragraph after the first paragraph providing for five-day notice of plenary session to give the members of the commission sufficient time to prepare for the plenary session unless majority of the members of the commission agreed for a, agrees for a shorter time. It will read as follows. Section 10, place of meeting and quorum. Notice together with the agenda of such meeting shall be given at least five days in advance to every member of the commission unless majority of the members of the commission agrees for a shorter period. So move, Mr. Chair. Mr. President. May I, Senator Allen? Senator Again, Gaitan. just a clarification. First of all, we support the amendment because this will give us more time. But it does have flexibility, as mentioned by the majority leader and the... Um, Senate President and, of course, previous and now the chair of the Committee on uh, National Defense that sometimes are dear uh, members from the military um, because of certain constraints have to um, wait for some documentary requirements. Therefore, in some cases, a one-day or two-day notice will, will suffice. So, But a five-day notice will give us enough time to review everything and prevent delays in the committee level. But I'd just like to clarify, but the uh, investigation report and all documentary uh, annexes will be given to members uh, at the latest by the time the notice is yes. sent. Yes. Is, is, is my understanding correct? Yes. 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 Th that is the understanding. Yes. But the secretariat as a rule uh, gives each member this uh, report as soon as it's ready, even before the notice. Yes, the, I'm being told by the secretary, unless it's a weekend, so if the notice comes out on a Friday, they could give it the following Monday. Yes. If that's all right. But as a, I think as a tradition, is it correct that the secretariat gives it to each member as soon as it's ready? So whether or not there is a notice, be, because I, I make this clarification because it seems that it is only Congressman Marcoleta who has the time to read every single uh, document and uh, is very well equipped and uh, prepared in every uh, uh, hearing. I don't know where he gets the time. So I just wanted to make sure that uh, we continue this uh, good practice by the Secretariat. Yes. And then the last uh, clarification is that when we do get the notice, um, if we do need additional information and it is reasonable, no, um, we may request this directly to the secretariat or the chairperson. The reason I ask this is I want to avoid, you know, the chairperson going through all the trouble of call, getting the, uh, the committee together, calling a hearing. Pagdating doon ay sabihin ko, alimbawa, uh, I want one more year of yung sal enya kasi may discrepancy, then ma postpone yung hearing. No? So with the, with the clarification that um, if we do need uh, additional information, as soon as we get the, the report, we can request this through either the secretariat or the chair para wala nang delay sa hearing. Of course, during the hearing, if something comes up, you know, in his, um, he, uh, the nominee or the appointee's uh, question and answer. Of course, any member can request additional information. No? So we, just with these clarifications uh, in connection with the rule, I think it, it would be a very good amendment and will actually equip us to do our job better. Yes. And I have instructed already the Secretary to do so. If there's a request from any of our members for any documentation or the documentation uh, for that appointee to be given as soon as possible to our colleagues and members. And also, on the rule, um, 
Yes, before I make a, uh, just a special mention, because uh, the, uh, the uh, minority floor leader of the CA, Senator uh, Caetano, mentioned about uh, me speaking up about this. This uh, five-day notice rule is to allow us to prepare for the next uh, appointee. But as point, uh, pointed out correctly by the good gentleman from Pagig and Pateros, that it will not uh, preclude that we, can know, we cannot have uh, hearings earlier for emergencies like what had happened in the previous Congress, wherein there was one general whose appointment papers, and uh, you know he was a bemedaled hero of the Marines, uh, had a pending application uh, with us, but it only came out, his papers, appointment papers only came out the same week that we were going to adjourn CNG, and he was retiring. So, kawawa naman po. That's why I'm glad that the majority floor leader included this uh, line so that unless otherwise uh, agreed upon unanimous or majority of the members agree on this, so we can do it shorter. We can have the notices come out shorter. Earlier, rather. Mr. Chair, I'd like to reiterate uh, the, uh, the motion to um, amend Section 24, Paragraph 6. Mr. Chairman. I'm sorry. Yeah, thank you. Just a clarification and for records purposes, Honorable Chair, the five days is uh, calendar days and not uh, working days. Uh, Mr. Yes. Chair. Calendar days. Calendar days. Thank you. Thank you. So there being no objection, there's a motion. There being no objection to the motion of the majority floor leader. The motion is approved. Thank you, Mr. Chair. This representation, and as the chairperson of the Committee on Rules and Resolutions, I would like to manifest that the effectivity of the amended rules shall be prospective, meaning it will apply to the appointments or nominations received upon the approval of the amendments. There is still a uh, one-minute suspension. One and last paragraph, Article 4, Rules of the Standing Committees, amending the one-day notice rule to five days unless majority of the members of the committee agrees for a shorter period, will read as follows. Notice, together with the agenda of such meetings, shall be given at least one five days in advance to every member of the committee through electronic means unless majority of the members of the committee agreed for a shorter period. This is for the plenary, Mr. Chair. Uh, there being no objection to the motion of the majority floor leader, motion is approved. Thank you, Mr. Chair. This representation, and as the chairperson of the Committee on Rules and Resolutions, I would just like to manifest that the effectivity of the amended rule shall be prospective, meaning it will, be, it will apply to the appointments or nominations received upon the approval of the amendments. There is, a, is there another amendment prior to that, or it's tackled already? Okay, not covered now. Okay. Um, manifestation is noted. Your Honor. Mr. Chair, may we now proceed to consider the recommendation of the Committee on the Constitutional Commission and Offices on the ad interim appointment of Mr. George Irwin M. Garcia as Chairperson, Commission on Elections for a term expiring on February 2, 2029, by Saidamen B. Pangarungan. I so move, Mr. Chair. Is there any objection? There being none, the consideration of the recommendation of the Committee on Constitutional Commissions and Offices is hereby. In order. Mr. Chair, I would like to recognize Senator Grace Po for her manifestation. Um, let's recognize possibly the chairperson first, and then we can start with the, <laughs> the manifestations. <laughs> Sorry, Mr. Chair. Mr. No. Chair, I move that the chairperson of the Committee on Constitutional Commissions and Offices, Senator Cincha A. Villar, be recognized. A distinguished colleague from Las Piñas, Senator Cincha Villar, is recognized. Mr. Chairman and esteemed colleagues in the Commission on Appointment, good 
afternoon. Mr. Chair, on behalf of your Committee on Constitutional Commissions and Offices of the Commission on Appointment, it is my honor and privilege to submit to this August body for its confirmation the ad interim appointment of Mr. George Irwin M. Garcia as Chairman, Commission on Election for a term expiring on February 2, 2029 by Saidamen B. Pangarungan. Abraham Lincoln once said that the best way to predict one future is to create it. Our appointee agreed and created his own future through hard work, faith, and perseverance. Chair Garcia was born and raised in Quezon City. His father is a patriot who devoted 36 years of his life serving our country. His mother, who is an educator and civil servant, instilled in our appointee's young mind the importance of good education. At a young age, our appointee strive to get a good education despite financial hardship. Motivated by his desire to have quality education, he joined national and regional quiz B competition and used the prize money to buy books and essentials. In law school, our appointee thrived and excelled in class despite being a full-time working student. Economic and financial constraints neither weakened his resolve nor dimmed his brilliance as he was a consistent dean's lister and graduated with Latin honors. Indeed, everything that our appointee endured throughout his young life <coughs> empowered him to live his life with purpose. Chair George Casilla is proof that education is the most powerful weapon one can wield to succeed in life. He completed his Bachelor of Arts in Political Science at the Lyceum of the Philippines University, Cum Laude. Thereafter, he pursued a master's degree in public administration in the Claro M. Recto Academy of Advanced Studies, also at the Lyceum of the Philippines University, again graduating cum laude. Striving for academic excellence, our appointee took up law at the College of Law of the Lyceum of the Philippines University. Chair Garcia is a veteran election lawyer. He is cognizant of the fact that the field of election law is so imbued with public interest that it made it, he made it his life's mission to see to it that the sanctity of the will of the electorate is upheld and reigns supreme in every electoral exercise. His professional life has always been geared towards strengthening of our government pillars of democracy. With this, he has become an indispensable ally in our young democracy's quest for honest, credible, credible and orderly election. As law professor and law dean, Chair Garcia has always signified, signif signified his unwavering love and unquestionable loyalty to the Republic of the Philippines. His willingness to share the knowledge and to encourage the youth to understand the power of a good education are commendable. The interplay between patriotism and education allowed him to inculcate in his students a thorough familiarity with our own constitution, culture, history, and political climate. He did this by teaching subjects like the Philippine foreign policy, Philippine constitution, administrative law, and law on public officers, with the end in view of sparking patriotism in the hearts of his students. Under his leadership as acting dean, the recent 20. 2020-21 bar exam results revealed that the pamantasan ng Lusod ng Maynila College of Law garnered a 100% passing rate. They said, they say if the shoe fits, you should walk in it. Mr. Chair, my esteemed colleague, it is my firm belief that there is no one more qualified to become the chairman of the Commission on Election than the appointee. His professional experience makes him highly qualified for the position. The accolades and award he has received as a lawyer, an advocate, a civic leader, law professor, and simply as a citizen speak volumes about what our appointee can contribute 
to the Commission on Election as an in institution of trust and keeper of the will of the electorate. Therefore, Mr. Chair, my fellow members of the Commission, it is my great honor and privilege to move for the confirmation of the ad interim appointment of Mr. George Irwin M. Garcia as Chairman, Commission on Election, for a term expiring on February 2, 2029, Vice Sidamen B. Pangarungan. I so move, Mr. Chair. Thank you very much. Thank you. Before we act on that motion, I know there are several of our colleagues who want to second the motion. Majority Leader, do you have the list? Yeah. May we recognize Senator Grace Paul? Um, our distinguished colleague from Iloilo, Pangasinan, the Republic of the Philippines, Senator Grace Paul, is recognized. Mr. President, my dear colleagues, I am very pleased to introduce today our nominee, who is a household name when it comes to election cases. Many of our colleagues here know him very well and have even sought his counsel in the past. Walang kandidato ang hindi nakakakilala sa ating nominee. From barangay to presidential electoral protests, his name is always present and he has become the standard to which many election lawyers aspire to be. With his long list of clients and vast experience in the field of election law, one would think that he is of the generation of long-established luminaries like most esteemed compañeros. But in reality, he is just part of the age bracket of Agamula. Still young and in the prime of his years, yet already imbued with wisdom and understanding of election law jurisprudence. He's probably one of the most famous leading men in oral arguments before the Commission on Election, Electoral Tribunals, and even the Supreme Court. Siya si Coco Martin ng election law, always prepared to argue his cases for hours, drawing case details and even passport numbers from thin air. Ang kanyang diskarte at karisma bilang kavitenyo, dagdagan pa ng sipag at syaga ang nagtataguyod sa dating simple at hamak na political science student ng Lyceum College na si George Irwin Garcia kung saan nakuha niya ang prestiyosong Jose P. Laurel Scholarship. He did not come from money, but he was, this was never a barrier to attorney George's success. Even at an early age, he understood the weight of being the eldest among four children of government employees with meager salaries. In law school, he juggled studies with his load as a working student while putting the cash prizes from various awards from education awards such as the 10 Outstanding Students of the Philippines, 10 Outstanding Students of Manila, and 10 Outstanding College Editors of the Philippines. Buti na lang, hindi pa uso ang TikTok at YouTube noon kung hindi naging influencer na rin ang ating nominee makatapos lamang ng pag-aaral. And he certainly has the personality for that. In spite of all these recognition, has never factored into Attorney Garcia's goals. It's not unusual to hear of his involvement in high-profile and controversial election cases. But he accepts these not for the recognition, but simply because it is his calling. Blessed with a brilliant legal mind, he has devoted himself to upholding the integrity of our electoral system and pushing for necessary advancements in our jurisprudence. I am no stranger to this brilliant lawyerling, lawyering, which I experienced firsthand when he championed my case before the tribunals. He navigated with such quiet confidence the issues hammered in marble and granite, in so far as legal principles and doctrines were concerned. Under Attorney Garcia's counsel, this case gave way for the creation of a landmark law, namely the Founding, Foundling Recognition and Protection Act. A law like this will impact not just me, but countless Filipinos across the globe, clearly illustrating the wide-ranging impact of Attorney Garcia, not just on our election laws, but on our general legal landscape. With these exemplary achievements in the legal profession, we can say that our nominee is sui generis or a class of his own. He's probably the only lawyer engaged by parties who used to be opponents, such as in the case of Senate President Zubiri, and Senate Minority Leader Coco Pimentel, as well as Manila Mayor's President Joseph Estrada and Isco Moreno. Attorney Garcia is doubtless a true professional to be this sought after by politicians of different colors. Truly behind his massive accomplishments, Attorney Garcia has never forgotten his roots and he remains a simple man. He still eats in roadside carinderias even on days when he's wearing his three-piece suit to work. 
and he still does his weekly groceries at the bidding of his wife and commander and chief. With a sterling career in private practice and a fulfilling personal life, Attorney Garcia really has nothing left to accomplish. Indeed, this appointment is less an achievement on his end and more an act of service and sacrifice for this country as it has required him to relinquish the freedoms and income of his highly successful private practice. Mabuti na lang at suportado siya ng kanyang kabiyak na isa ring kawani ng gobyerno. Thus, he has readily stepped up to the task, eager to serve the country as best he can. With that, it is my honor to support the, confirm the confirmation of a appointment of Attorney George Irwin Garcia as Commission on Elections Chairperson. I so move, Mr. President. Thank you. Mr. Chair, we now uh, recognize Senator Lauren Legarda. Mr. President, my dear colleagues, it is my honor to share with you the many reasons why I stand proud in moving for the confirmation of our nominee's appointment as commissioner of the Commission on Elections. There is no question that Attorney George Erwin Mojica Garcia is a brilliant election law practitioner and educator. His level of professionalism and dedication to his field of practice is unlike any other. When Attorney Garcia makes legal strategies, he maps out his plan from start to finish, even before the beginning of a case. This is why he is always a couple of steps ahead of his opponents in court. When he delivers his oral arguments, he does it with finesse, eloquence, and expertise. As he conjures thought-provoking arguments, he simultaneously draws the attention of his audience and makes them listen. In the field of election law practice, Attorney Garcia is truly one of a kind. <clears throat> but above and beyond the brilliance of his mind and the magnitude of his work, there lies a man whose attitude, humility, and perspective in life brought him to where he is today. Attorney Garcia is never really one who basks in glory under the limelight. Neither can he be considered as one who clings to the titles, accolades, and prestige that he amassed throughout his professional career as an election law practitioner. Egocentricity is perhaps a condition that will never be attached to his personality. I've had the opportunity to listen to him discuss laws and cases for hours and present various sets of well-constructed legal arguments for the Supreme Court, Presidential Electoral Tribunal, Senatorial Electoral Tribunal, House of Representatives Electoral Tribunal, and the Commission on Elections. Even prior to his stint as the media favorite during the recently concluded 2022 national and local elections, being a Comelec commissioner then, Attorney Garcia has been frequently seen on television, heard during radio interviews, mentioned in newspapers, social media, but these countless exposures have always revolved around his work as a lawyer and now as a chairman. Throughout the many times that I have encountered Attorney Garcia, I have never heard him talk publicly about himself and his accomplishments. For Attorney Garcia, it was never about himself. It was always about his contribution to the field of law and to society. And if there are times that it was, it came from others who cannot help but appreciate and credit him for his work. He purposefully dimmed his light in order to emphasize what to him was more important and necessary, the complexities and intricacies of our laws and the potential of our public school education system. To him, he is a mere instrument for social change and the pragmatic progress of our legal institution. Ultimately, it is not difficult to discern that he is a person of honor and integrity. His actions spoke volumes about his character. Rather than professing his values, he practiced them without compromise. And that is a reason why there is not a shadow of doubt on my part to sponsor the nomination of Attorney Garcia. Many would agree when I say that perhaps one of Attorney Garcia's best features is his humility. His silence about his hardships had led most of us to believe that his journey to success was, was smooth sailing. But in reality, his humble beginnings impelled him to strive harder and aim higher. Born to a family who lived from paycheck to paycheck, struggled to make ends meet, Attorney Garcia at an early age 
took upon himself the responsibility of achieving his dreams by living a life dedicated to his family. The financial hardships endured growing up did not hinder him from continuously pursuing his education. It inspired him to be creative in searching for ways to make ends meet. Motivated by this desire to stay in school, he joined national and regional quiz B competitions, used the prize money, as mentioned earlier, to augment his and his family's financial needs. By the time Arthur Garcia set foot in law school, he thrived, excelled, despite being a full-time working student. The time and financial constraints that confronted him did not serve as barriers in becoming a consistent Dean's Lister and a graduate with Latin honors. Everything that he endured in the past enabled him to live his life with overflowing humility and gratitude. Attorney Garcia is living proof that the difficult circumstances in life do not always bring about defeat, that a person always has the power to take charge of his destiny through faith, perseverance, and hard work. His thirst and an ending appreciation for education are laudable. His willingness to share his knowledge and his inclination to encourage others, especially the youth, to understand the power of education deserve a strong commendation. Under his leadership as acting dean, the recent 2020-2021 bar exam results revealed that the Pamantasa ng Lungsod na Maynila College of Law garnered a 100% passing rate. The efforts of Attorney Garcia cannot go unnoticed. Despite the pandemic, he went above and beyond by providing free bar review lectures to the bar examinees to give them full support and a sense of community. Through his effort, he made sure that the PLM bar examinees are able to have higher chances of passing the bar exams. In honoring the sacrifices of his father, who selflessly devoted himself to defend our country for 36 years, Attorney Garcia has always signified his unwavering love and unquestionable loyalty to the Republic of the Philippines. The interplay between patriotism and education allowed him to inculcate in his students a thorough familiarity with their own constitution, culture, history, and political climate. He did this by teaching subjects like Philippine foreign policy, Philippine constitution, administrative law, the law and public officers with the end in view of sparking patriotism in the hearts of his students. Attorney Garcia lived his life in service to others. His kindness, generosity, patience, and consideration cascaded to everyone around him. From security guards to high-ranking appointed and elected officials, Attorney Garcia has always been treated with utmost respect and high regard. When he was still a private practitioner, his work gravitated towards public service. Kaya po, naniniwala ako, ang mga salitang para sa bayan ay hindi bago para kay Attorney Garcia. He is aware of the gravity of his responsibility and the impact he brings as an advocate in the field of election law. Attorney Garcia is cognizant that the field of election law is imbued with public interest, made it his life's mission to see to it that the sanctity of the will of the electorate is upheld and reigns supreme in every electoral exercise. Safe to say that Attorney Garcia's professional life has always been geared towards the development of our election laws and their processes. He is an ally in the formulation of pragmatic solutions to have honest, credible, and orderly elections. My esteemed colleagues, Mr. President, it is my firm belief that there is no one more qualified to become a chairman of the Commission on Elections than Attorney George Garcia. I'm confident that he will faithfully discharge to the best of his ability the duties of leading the COMELEC even beyond his term of office, the professional experience that makes Chairman Garcia highly qualified for the position need not be reflected in his curriculum vitae as they are already a matter of public knowledge. A simple reference to the Supreme Court rulings, books of recognition of finalists of the 10 outstanding students, outstanding young men, outstanding college editors of the Philippines, outstanding students of Manila, newspapers, and a list of Laurel scholarship are more than sufficient. It brings me Comfort knowing that we have this opportunity of appointing a person whose level of competence and commitment in the field of election law is beyond reproach. The Commission on Elections is in dire need of someone like Attorney Garcia, whose goal in life is not fueled 
by sheer ego and ambition, but driven by the desire to introduce and effect change and reform for the betterment of the electoral system. He is fit for the job. Having said all of that, Mr. President, I move for the confirmation of the nomination of Attorney George Irwin Mojica Garcia as Chairman of the Commission and Elections. Thank you, Paul. Thank you. Senator Legarda. Mr. Chair, uh, we now recognize Congresswoman Lani Revilla for her manifestation. Our distinguished colleague from the great province of Cavite, Senator uh, Congressman Lani Revilla, the boss of our colleague in the Senate, is hereby recognized. Maraming salamat po, Mr. Senate President. To my colleagues, I will no longer read uh, this uh, long manifestation of support to uh, our chairman, our Comelec Commissioner, um, Comelec Chairman Garcia. But I will, uh, I will read just a portion of this because I do believe that he is really made for the job because of the success of the recently concluded elections and being the um, so-called everyone's election lawyer. I do believe that he is really made for the job and being part of the COMELEC at its helm now, COMELEC Chairman Garcia intimate, intimated that he is out on a mission. He gave up his lucrative private practice to lead our electoral body and transform it into one which will deliver the true heart of our democratic system, bringing back integrity into our election process that will ensure that the voice of the people is clearly heard one vote one voice. Attorney George, you have the full support of this body as I know that you are truly competent and more than eligible in your post and we support you in your mission to be a strong guardian and vanguard of the ballot. God bless all the works of your hands. God bless the Philippines. Therefore, I second the motion for the confirmation of the appointment of Attorney George Garcia as Comelec Chairman. Thank you, Mr. President. Thank you. Mr. Chair, may we now recognize uh, Senator Jingo Estrada for his uh, manifestation. Your distinguished colleague from San Juan, Senator uh, Jingo Estrada is recognized. Thank you, Mr. President. Good afternoon, my dear colleagues. This is just to place on record my support to the confirmation of that interim appointment of Attorney George Irwin Garcia as chairperson of the Commission on Elections. As he is a well-known top-notch top election law practitioner since 2001, with vast experience on many high-profile and landmark election cases. Alam na niya mga problema at kahinaan ng kasulukuyang sistema ng pangangasiwa ng halalan sa ating bansa. At tiyak na matutulungan niya ang institusyon, maging tayo mga mga babatas upang may saayos ang pagdaraos nito sa ngalan nagpapatatag ng ating demokrasya. I also commend Chairman Garcia for being tireless in answering questions from the media. We always see him on TV and radio at, matya, at matyagang nagpapaliwanag sa mga kaganapan at updates tungkol sa eleksyon. Malaking bagay po ito sa pagsiguro na transparent ang buong proseso at nakakatulong ito sa pagpapataas ng kredibilidad at integridad ng halalan. He was a consistent honor student during his younger days and we expect him to also excel in his latest assignment of enforcing election laws and regulations and administering the Philippine electoral system. Given his exemplary educational background, extensive practice of election law, an employee of the COMELEC, a member of the academe and mass media, he brings a well-rounded appreciation and distinct perspective to our electoral process. Maraming maraming salamat po. Thank you, Senator Strada. Mr. Chair, may we now recognize uh, Congressman Padiernas of the GP Party List? Congressman Padiernas of GP Party List is recognized. Good afternoon, Mr. Chair, and to my colleagues. Uh, I take this opportunity to express my support to the confirmation of Honorable George Irwin Mojica Garcia as Chairman of the Commission on Elections. I believe that Chairman Garcia possesses the qualification and has the experience to lead this very important government agency. His academic training with multiple degrees has prepared him well for his job. Bachelor of Arts in Political Science, Bachelor of Laws, Master of Laws, and Masters in Public Administration. He has been a, 
a professional lecturer, acting dean of the College of Law, and a member of board of the regents at the Pamantasan ng Lunsod ng Maynila. A part of a part-time faculty member at the Manila Law College, the Lyceum of the Philippines, Uni Philippine University, Philippine Law School, and De La Salle University. He is acknowledged by many sources to be one of the best election lawyers in the country eh, and has represented many prominent political personalities. He has handled various cases before the Supreme Court, Court of Appeals, Office of the Ombudsman, Sandigan Bayan, Presidential Electoral, Electoral Tribunal, Senate Electoral Tribunal, House of Representatives, Electoral, Electoral Tribunal, and the Commission on Election. I am confident that Chairman Garcia will be able to lead the Commission on Election in introducing the necessary reforms to enable it to pursue its mandates more effectively and efficiently. I therefore manifest my wholehearted support to the confirmation of Honorable George Erwin Mojica Garcia as Chairman of the Commission on Election. Thank you very much. Thank you, Congressman. Mr. Chair, may we now recognize Senator J.V. Hercito. Our distinguished colleague from San Juan, Senator J.V. Hercito, our Deputy Assistant Majority, uh, the Assistant Majority Floor Leader, is recognized. Mr. Chairman, fellow members of the Commission of Appointments, good afternoon. It is my privilege to support the confirmation of the anti-interim appointment of George Erwin Mojica Garcia as the Chairman of the Commission of Elections. This man needs no introduction. Aside from his status as a sought-after and seasoned election lawyer, he recently heard of the most difficult seasonal job in the government, that is the election season. He became the face of the COMELEC, who ensured that the transparency and integrity of our democratic expression as then Commissioner of the Constitutional Body during the May 22 national and local elections, he was instrumental in the success and peaceful conduct of the elections. Attorney George, as he is, or Attorney G, as he's more popularly known, has a long list of accomplishments as a veteran election lawyer. Long before his appointment as chair of the COMELEC, he is acknowledged by most as a top and perhaps the best election lawyer in the country. Not just because of his win, but also because of his passion and defending in every case that he is entrusted. He's known in the legal field as someone who has the ability to raise arguments that evoke fruitful discussions and pressing legal issues among the bench and the bar. In the legal profession, he is admired as a staunch defender of the law. Perhaps his greatest asset is in his charm, which worked well on his wife, Senate's very own attorney, Marivic Laurel Garcia. He's a devoted family man and father to his children. As he is hands on to his new roles in the Comelec, he is a supportive dad who never missed an important family occasion. Chairman George is a well-rounded person. He is, only, he is only preceded by his hard work, sheer determination, and intellect. This man came from a family of modest family means, modest means who worked his way up to get to where he is today. Mr. Chairman, it is truly an honor to support the confirmation of Attorney George Garcia as Chairman of the Commission on Elections. I trust that this man will bring the needed and genuine reforms in the Comelec. Thank you. Mr. Chair, may we now uh, recognize the head of the House Contingent, Congressman Ramon Guico. Our distinguished Vice Chairman of the Commission on Appointments, the head of the House Panel, uh, Congressman Guico is recognized. Uh, Mr. Chairman, the House contingent to the Commission on Appointments expresses its, its utmost support for the appointment of Attorney George Erwin Garcia as Chairman of the Commission on Elections. He has proven before this August body that he has experience, skill, and integrity demanded by the position. It is our earnest prayer that Attorney Garcia continues to perform excellently as Chairman of the Commission on Election. I so move, uh, Mr. Chairman, for the confirmation of Attorney George Erwin Garcia. Thank you. If there are no other... Mr. Chair, on the sorry. part of the majority, we fully support the confirmation of uh, Mr. George Erwin Garcia. We'd like to recognize Senator Cayetano. Mr. Chairman, on the part of the minority, no objection. And in fact, we support uh, 
the confirmation of Attorney George Garcia as uh, chairperson of the Com Commission on Elections. Thank you, sir. Before we act on the motion, I just want to add on to what everyone had said to second the motion. Everybody has spoken about the brilliance of the good gentleman from Cavite on his uh, uh, handling of law cases, of his being a learned fellow in many universities as a dean and professor. But I'd like to put a human side to this gentleman. When I won in 2007, and many of you know the circumstances of me winning in 2007, of the slightest, the little, smallest of margins, this gentleman was right beside me in, in that win, together with the discussions in the Supreme Court. And then he became a very close friend of mine. But you all know in 2011, I resigned out of Delicadeza. He was also right beside me. He was the first one I spoke to, and we both cried on each other's shoulders when I told him my plan out of Delicadeza to resign from the Senate. And then I decided to run in 2013. Fate was not kind to me, and I did not win, but he never left my side. And on 2016, he was the first person I approached to ask if I was going to run once again because I said I'll no longer seek political office. He was the first one to convince me as well that you have a strong chance of winning, and the rest is history. The reason why I mention this is if you notice the clients of this distinguished gentleman have been with him for decades, for many, many years. It's not because he's brilliant, which he is. It's because he has a heart and he cares for you like a brother and like a father. And that is why I am honored today to act on the motion that there being no objection, the to commission, share. yes. If I may add to your, yes. your manifestation and your comments, uh, I would just like to add, I started politics on 2004 and all my electoral cases, it was George Garcia who was against me. <laughs> <laughs> That's on record, Mr. Chair. But I know his competence and integrity. That's why I fully support his confirmation. Yes. And to add to that, even if you're your op opponent on the other side, he was very cordial and professional about it. And that is why we appreciate uh, the appointment of this gentleman. So I know that he will bring a new class of leadership to the Comelec. Talagang walang kaduda duda. So with that, Mr. President, uh, with the, is that majority leader? Uh, there is a motion, duly seconded by almost everyone in this commission, on the ad interim appointment of George Irwin M. Garcia as chairperson, commission of commission on elections. So the term expiring February 2, 2029. Vice Saidamen Pangarungan. There being no objection, the chair hears none. The ad interim appointment of Mr. George Irwin Garcia is hereby confirmed. Congratulations, sir. <laughs> Majority leader, shall we proceed with the next one? Lest be, I be accused that I I did not act on his <laughs> confirmation a second time around. <laughs> Mr. Chair, may we now proceed to consider the recommendation of the Committee on Constitutional Commission and offices on the ad interim appointment of Mr. Carlo Alexe Bendigo Nograles as Chairperson, Civil Service Commission for a term expiring on February 2, 2029, Vice Alicia De La Rosa Bala. I so move, Mr. Chair. Is there any objection? Chairing none. The consideration of the recommendation of the Commission, the Committee on the Constitutional Commissions and Offices is hereby called to order on the appointment of Carlo Alexi Bendigo Nogranes. Mr. Chair, I move that the chairperson of the Committee on Constitutional Commissions and Offices, Senator Cynthia A. Villar, be recognized. Our distinguished colleague, the chairperson, is recognized. Mr. Chair, esteemed colleagues, ladies and gentlemen, good afternoon. On behalf of the Committee on Constitutional Commissions and Offices, it is my honor and privilege to submit to this August body for confirmation the ad interim appointment of Mr. Carlo Alexi Bendigo Nograles as chairman of the Civil Service Commission for a term expiring on February 2, 2029, Vice Alicia De La Rosa Bala. 
Our appointee is best known for having served as the co-chairperson of the Interagency Task Force for the Management of Emerging Infectious Diseases, or IATF. Amidst the tumult and uncertainties brought about by COVID-19, he was the calm, composed, and reassuring voice which helped our countrymen navigate one of the most destructive pandemics in modern history. But ladies and gentlemen, there is much more to this young man. Our appointee finished his elementary education at the Ateneo de Davao University, where he learned the Jesuit way of being a man for others. He finished high school at the prestigious Philippine Science High School in Diliman and earned his Bachelor of Science degree in Management Engineering at the Ateneo de Manila University and Juris Doctor at the Ateneo de Manila School of Law. He is the second of the four children of former Speaker of the House, Prospero Sinograles, from whom he inherited the passion for public service. Our appointee has been with the government service for more than two decades, as he previously served as the Chief Political Officer from 2001 to 2010, and as representative of the 1st District of Davao City from 2010 to 2018. In the House of Representatives, he chaired the House Committee on Labor and Employment and championed the cause for the Green Jobs Law and the Job Start Philippine Act. He also chaired the House Committee on Appropriation and worked with the Senate in institutionalizing the National Feeding Program, the Patawid Pamilya Filipino Program or PORBIS, the National Integrated Cancer Control Program, the Universal Health Care for All Filipinos, and the Magna Carta of the Poor, and in, st in establishing a national mental health policy, creating the Philippine Space Agency, institutionalizing the Balik Scientist Program, and the act promoting ease of doing business. Our appointee was also the cabinet secretary of former President Duterte from November 2018 to March 2022. He wore different hats, in, including chair of the cabinet assistance system, head of the cabinet cluster secretariat, and chairperson of the interagency task force on zero hunger. As chair of the IATF Dash Zero Hunger, he spearheaded the crafting and publication of our country's first ever national food policy, a landmark document in the country's fight against hunger and malnutrition, while also encouraging the participation of private sector in addressing hunger. As a lawyer, he is best qualified to chair the Civil Service Commission. His legal and human resource skills are key in reviewing policies of the Civil Service Commission to ensure a responsive and transformational civil service. His extensive experience in public service, especially during our country's most challenging battle against COVID-19, showed and proved his fitness and competence to be at the help of the Central Personnel Agency of the Philippine government. He is sure to inject his brand of visionary and strategic leadership to help the CSC fulfill its constitutional mandate. Chair Nograles is married to Mrs. Marga Maceda Montemayor. She is a social entrepreneur and advocate for women. They have three treasures, Carlo Mateo, Christian Massimo, and Katarina Micaele. Indeed, our appointee, Chair Nograles, is the leader we all need at the helm of our Civil Service Commission. He possesses not only the skills, education, experience, and knowledge, but most importantly, the heart of a true public servant, the personification of what every civil servant must be. Mr. Chair, distinguished colleagues, it is my honor and privilege to move for the confirmation of the ad interim appointment of Mr. Carlo Alexi Bendigo Nograles as the chairperson of the Civil Service Commission. I so move, Mr. Chair. Thank you very much, our distinguished chairperson. Uh, Majority Leader, I know there are a few that would like to second the motion. Mr. 
Mr. Chair, may we now recognize uh, Congresswoman Lani Revilla for her manifestation. Our distinguished colleague, Congresswoman Lani Mercado Revilla is recognized. Thank you very much, uh, Mr. President. Attorney Carlo Alexi Nograles is a true public servant. His extensive experience in governance only tells us that he is the right man to head the Civil Service Commission, one of the constitutional commissions specially expressed in the 1987 Constitution. The Civil Service Commission is at the heart of public service as it regulates the employment and working conditions of civil servants, oversee hiring and reward systems, and promote moral values and integrity of government employees. Before our president, Rodrigo Roa Duterte, left office, he appointed then Cabsec Nograles to the CSC as its chairperson. He also spoke on behalf of the president as his acting spokesperson, and he was the, he was the sleep, sleepless face of the interagency task force on emerging infectious diseases, telling us the alert level systems for the next 15 days or so. And the height of the two-year pandemic, he has been one of the partners of LGUs. I was then city mayor of Bacoor. Attorney Carlo Nograles was also the chairperson of the task force on zero hunger. He was also the chairperson of the National Irrigation Authority. He truly has been very busy. He is an asset in government. He was also honored or honed in the Philippine Congress as a three-term representative from Davao City in the 15th. 16th and 17th Congress wherein I met him and saw him work. A truly remarkable feat in public service. Attorney Carlo, you have my full support for you are more than eligible in your post as the chairperson of the CSC. Please make it part of your mission also to build moral integrity and compassion in government service. Sama-sama tulong-tulong para sa ating mga minamahal na bayan. God bless all the works of your hands and I therefore would like to second the motion to confirm the appointment of our CSE Chairperson, Attorney Carlo Alexi Nograle. Salamat po. Thank you, Congresswoman Revilla. Mr. Chair, may we now recognize Senator Lauren Legarda for her manifestation. Our distinguished colleague from Antique and Republic of the Philippines, Senator Lauren Legarda, is recognized. Mr. President, I have the honor to sponsor the nomination of Attorney Carlo Nograles as Chairperson of the Civil Service Commission. Attorney Nograles is a lawyer by profession who obtained his degree from Ateneo Law School in 2003. In a relatively short span of time, his sterling achievements affirmed that his profession and values in life have found relevance in the sphere of public service. Attorney Nograles has shown his commitment and dedication to service in the many senior government posts he has been called to lead. From 2018 to 2022, he served as cabinet secretary and ably assisted the president in delivering his promise to the people through coordination with the various agencies of government. As chairperson of the cabinet assistance system and head of the cabinet cluster system secretariat, he ensured that the office of the cabinet secretariat ran smoothly and in an orderly manner while dutifully performing other roles. At the height of the pandemic, Attorney Nograles co-chaired the Interagency Task Force IATF on Emerging Infectious Diseases. He was instrumental in the formulation of policies to address the pandemic's impact and prepare the country for post-pandemic recovery. Attorney Nograles also served as a chairperson of the Interagency Task Force on Zero Hunger, where he played a crucial role in the drafting of the country's first-ever national food policy and advocated for an end to the threats of hunger and malnutrition. Prior to his appointment as cabinet secretary, Attorney Nograles served as a three-term congressman of the first district of Davao City. His contributions to Congress as chair of the House Committee on Appropriations in 2017 and 2018, while I was the chairman of the Committee on Finance here, resulted in inclusion of relevant and long overdue funding provisions in the annual GAA for the benefit of various sectors like education, health, agriculture, military, local economies, to name a few. Furthermore, as legislator, he knew very well what is central to sustainable development. He heeded the call to respond to the challenges of environmental protection and economic development through the Green Jobs Act, which he authored. 
an important recognition that Attorney Nograles received for his outstanding service was conferred by former President Rodrigo Duterte, the Order of La Candula with the rank of Grand Cross or Bayani. The Order of La Candula is one of the highest civilian orders in the country. On March 4, 2022, Attorney Nograles was appointed by then President Duterte as Civil Service Commission Chairman. During the ad interim appointment, the CSC sought to upgrade its service delivery through digitalization, proactive human resource policies and programs, upskilling of government workforce. Attorney Nograles also worked on promulgating a policy to provide adaptable, responsive work schemes for government officials and employees to manage situations that may affect the delivery of public services. I firmly believe in Attorney Nograles' capacity to steer the course of the Civil Service Commission while providing the public with essential services that are adapted to current realities, especially as we enter the better normal. With this commendable professional background, integrity, and a sense of purpose and commitment, it is my honor and privilege to nominate Attorney Carlo Alexi B. Nograles as Chairperson of the Civil Service Commission. Thank you, Mr. President. Thank you, distinguished colleague. Mr. Chair, may we not recognize Senator Pimentel? May we, uh, Senator, a uh, congressman, yes, congressman. Ah, sorry, sorry. I was looking for my colleague, if he was here. Future yes, Senator. Congressman uh, Johnny Pimentel is recognized from the <laughs> province of Surigao del Sur. Well, maybe. I hope to be promoted sometime. <laughs> anyway, Mr. Chair, I take honor and pride to have known the nominee as he was my colleague in the 17th Congress. And more than that, Mr. Chair, he's a good family friend. Chairman Carlo is no stranger to public service. In our tripartite system of government, Chairman Carlo is one who has faithfully been part and parcel of each of its branches. In the legislative branch, he was one of the most active members of the House of Representatives, championing measures that served to improve the lives of the Filipino people. Among others, he manned competently the chairmanship of the Committee on Labor and Employment in the 16th Congress, advocating the interest of our labor force. Later, in the 17th Congress, he served as the steward of the powerful Committee on Appropriations and ensured that the government funds would reach those who need it the most. It was in his chairmanship where the free higher education law received its 40 billion appropriations, where the PhilHealth universal coverage and supplemental benefits was given 3.5 billion pesos, and where the armed and uniformed personnel received their increase in salaries. As member of the executive branch, he was most proficient in ensuring the close coordination among different government agencies. He served as one of the prominent faces in our government's anti-COVID response when he served as co-chairperson of the Interagency Task Force on Emerging Infectious Disease that was tasked to formulate policy and plans of our government's anti-COVID campaign. In the trying times where pandemic ravaged the Philippines, it was the refreshing remarks and updates given by Chairman Carlo as acting presidential spokesperson, which gave the Filipino public solace in our winning battle against the virus. And in the judicial branch, Chairman Carlo is a lawyer by vocation and thus an officer of the court. Indeed, a public servant who has served his tour of duty in all our government branches. Earlier this year, Chairperson Carlo was given an ad interim appointment by then President Duterte. However, it was bypassed in the 18th Congress when Congress adjourned its session sine day. Nevertheless, though with a short stint, he is credited to have led the 128 collective negotiations agreements to advance employee empowerment initiatives, issued crucial advisories in the Bayanihan Bakunahan to support the government response in addressing the health crisis, among others. The Civil Service Commission, a 
the central personal agency of the government, is required by the Constitution to establish a career service and adopt measures that promote morale, efficiency, integrity, responsiveness, progressiveness, and courtesy in the civil service. I am confident, Mr. Chair, that Chairman Carlo Nuglares is the perfect person who can fulfill such mandate and authority. Therefore, Mr. Chair, I have the honor to second the motion for the confirmation of Carlo Nograles as Chairman of the Civil Service Commission. So move, Mr. Chair. Thank you very much, Congressman. Mr. Mr. Chair, may we not recognize yes. Senator Bongo? Distinguished colleague from Davao, Senator Bongo is recognized. Mr. President, allow me to make of uh, record my support and uh, further to second the motion to confirm the ad interim appointment of Chairman Carlo Alexi Nograles as Chairman of the Civil Service Commission, uh, fellow uh, Dabawenyo. Before having been appointed uh, to the Civil Service Commission, Chairman Carlo Nograles served as Cabinet Secretary from November 2018 to March uh, 2022 to former President Rodrigo Duterte, where he uh, worked as a close advisor and ensured close coordination among different uh, agencies of the government, such as the DILG, the DPWH, the DOH, to name a few. Also, Chair Carlo became an uh, acting presidential spokesperson where he was uh, tasked to speak on behalf of the former president on information regarding pressing issues and concerns. Kung uh, si Chairman uh, Garcia ang naging mukha ng COMELEC sa nakaraang uh, national elections, si Chairman Nograles naman po ang mukha ng IATF sa ating uh, COVID uh, response. As co-author of the Department of OFWs or Migrant Workers, uh, I am particularly grateful to uh, Chairman Carlo for spearheading the technical working group composed of different departments which was tasked to come up with a unified uh, executive agency's version of the Department of Migrant Workers uh, Bill. Now, we have a new department for the OFWs. Mr. President, isa pong tunay na lingkod bayan si Chairman Carlo Nograles, kaya naman po tiwala ako sa, sa kanya, nagagampanan niya po ng buong husay at katapatan ang mandatong ipagkakaloob sa kanya. Thank you, uh, Mr. President. Maraming salamat, Senator Go. Choy Leader. Mr. Chair, may we now recognize Congressman Padiernos of GP Party List? Congressman Padiernos is recognized. Mr. Chair, good afternoon and uh, my colleagues. Uh, Mr. Chair, thank you for the opportunity to give my comments. It is my honor to endorse for the consideration of this August body the confirmation of Honorable Carlo Alexi Bendigo Nograles as Chairman of the Civil Service Commission. Chairman Carlo is the son of a very dear, very dear friend, former House Speaker Prospero Nograles. I have known Chairman Carlo and his siblings for many years. His, bro his brother Jericho Coco Nograles was a former member of the House of representative as representative of PBA, party list. His sister, Mix Nograles, is now the incumbent representative of the same party list. Chairman Carlo himself served as representative of the first district of Davao City in the 15th, 16th, and 17th Congress. He has served in, the bar, in, in other various capabilities capabilities, cabinet secretary, chairperson of the National Irrigation Authority, co-chairperson and spokesperson of the Interagency Task Force on Emerging, Emerging Infectious Diseases or IATF, acting presidential spokesperson and chairman of the Civil Service Commission under the previous administration. Chairman Carlos' educational background is equally impressive. Juris Doctor degree, School of Law, Ateneo de Manila University, Bachelor of Science in Management Engineering from the same university, Doctor of Philosophy in the Development Administration, 
from the University of Southeastern Philippines, Davao City, and Doctor of Humanities, Honor Honoris Causa, from the West Visayas State University, Iloilo City. I have no doubt in my mind that Chairman Carlo will continue to be a great asset to the to public service. In fact, his press appointment as chairman of the Civil Service Commission has been well received at the commission with the commissioners and the officials and employees of CSC expressing their an equivocal support to his appointment and his confirmation as its chairman. It is therefore my honor to manifest my wholehearted support to the confirmation of Honorable Carlo Alexis Bendigo Nograles as chairman of the Civil Service Commission. Good afternoon, sir. Thank to you share me, we now recognize uh, Senator J.V. Ercito. Our distinguished colleague, Senator J.V. Ercito, is recognized. Mr. Chairman, fellow members of the Commission Appointments, good afternoon. It is an honor to support the confirmation of that interim appointment of Carlo Alexe Bendigo Nograles as chair of the Civil Service Commission. Mr. Chairman, uh, Carlo, uh, Chairman Carlo is a batchmate of mine at the House of Representatives during the 15th Congress, and uh, he, probably he's one of the nicest, most amiable persons that I've known. Not only that, he's probably one of the most qualified to re, um, in each opposition, in each position that he really he has held in government. Carlo Gras has worn different hats in the name of public service. He's a lawyer who chose government service over a lucrative lawyering career. Many of us here had the honor of sharing the floor with him in the House of Representatives as a legislator. Some of us perhaps have worked with him or seen him perform his role as close advisor to former President Rodrigo Duterte when he was recruited to serve side by side with the President as his administration's cabinet secretary. He also played a key role in managing the effects of COVID-19 pandemic in the country when he was entrusted as the co-chair of the Interagency Task Force on Emerging Infectious Disease, or IATF, and later on as its spokesperson. We also discovered that this man is a big heart not just for public service, but also for dancing, as he performed for his followers in TikTok to lift up the spirits of our frontline workers during the pandemic. As he's a staunch advocate of education and eradication of poverty, he's also a loving and devoted family man to his wife, Marga, and children. Today, he stands before the Commission on Appointments to take on yet another role in government, this time as Chairman of the Civil Service Commission. I trust that with his meticulous leadership, he will lead compet competently the constitutional body to be at the center of excellence while putting the welfare of civil servants at the heart of the agency. This is the kind of man that we need for the top post in the Civil Service Commission, a man who dedicated his life in government, but always finds his inspiration to serve for his Filip Filipinos. Again, Mr. Chairman, it's an honor to second the nomination of Carlo Nugreles as Chairman of the Civil Service Commission. Thank you very much, Senator. Mr. Chair, may we now recognize Congressman Ramon Gico? Uh, Congressman Guico is recognized. Yes, uh, uh, brief manifestation. As head of the House contingent to the Commission on Appointments, I join my esteemed colleagues in supporting the appointment of Attorney Carlo Alexi Bindigo Nograles as chairperson of the Civil Service Commission. Following thorough deliberations, we have found him to be of excellent moral character and with a stellar track record repeating the position. We wish Attorney Nograles good luck as he undertakes the monumental task of leading the Civil Service Commission. I so move, Mr. Chairman. Mr. Chair, on the part of the majority, we so fully support the ad interim appointment of Carlo Alexei Bendigo Nograles. Yes, and uh, we Chair, appreciate... Uh, yes, sir. Uh, on the Congressman part of the minority, and in behalf of our minority leader, we fully support the confirmation of Chairman Carlo Nograles. So move, Mr. Chair. Before we act on the motion, I would just like to say that we truly appreciate the, the patience of the appointee on a slightly delayed appointment. <laughs> and today, congratulations, sir. 
because we are going, there being no objection to the motion. My dear friend, Kupadre, on the commission to, afford, to confirm the ad interim appointment of Mr. Carlo Alexei Bendigo Nogales as chairperson of the Civil Service Commission for a term expiring February 2, 2029. Vice Alicia De La Rosa Bala. There being no objection, the ad interim, ad interim appointment is hereby confirmed. Congratulations, sir. Majority Leader. Mr. Chair, there being no other matters to discuss, I move to adjourn. I will only agree to the adjournment. After adjournment, these two gentlemen will join us in the podium for a photo op as they truly deserve. Also, a slightly delayed appointment for the Chairman of the Commission on Elections. And also, for the information of my colleagues in the Senate, we're moving the session to 3.30 in the afternoon. So there is no objection to the motion of the Majority Floor Leader. There being none. Session is adjourned.